Welcome back to the low APM challenge. This time on Terran, we're working our way through the Golden Leagues, understanding a whole new set of concepts. We're going to be adding in advanced units, the scary ones that don't start with M. Yes, I'm talking about my ghosts, my tanks, my liberators, though we were already building some tanks before. Just in general, as well as basic micro and bio versus mech. We covered, of course, we're not ignoring all the uh, topics that we covered earlier, and we're not changing things up dramatically. We're just adding in a little more uh, to get a little bit better. So, like, subscribe before you fall asleep. I have quite, I've collected some questions, Jimmy has done a pretty good job. We've got great questions like, Winter, when I need to sleep, uh, you're, you're good at helping. Sometimes I win games now if I do things right. Sometimes I lose my games. Uh, and other great comments we will be covering later on in this episode. But without further ado, we're going to start off with something a little different than just jumping into the ladder. I was challenged. Not, not for low APM, not... Uh, do we, do we have the numbers, Jimmy? Can we bring up... In the Gold League, we're aiming for 70. Uh, and then at Platinum, 80 actions per minute. And of course, if I fail, I owe you, the people, subscriptions. But, I've been told, um, that essentially, the Elite AI, especially when it chooses to do Turtle Terran, is impossible to beat. Um, Turtle Terran definitely, uh, I, I don't know if I can verify this. Am I just making it up, or did someone say it? Yes, one person in the chat. And I want to demonstrate how to, against, I know a lot of people play the AI. I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing to play against the AI, whether to warm up or just to kind of practice for ranked. Um, but yes. No, no, it's your time. It's your time. Come through. This is the time. Some some player did mention something. I don't know who it could be. <clears throat> Actually, I didn't realize there were so many options. Honestly, I've really never played against the AI. Uh, as opposed to... But, but they've added a lot, and I think this was a Legacy of the Void. The Terran Elite AI, when it chooses to go turtle mech, is borderline unbeatable. Those were the words, I believe, of Biggest Dickest 99 who may have forgotten, because short-term memory loss may explain why it feels unbeatable. I'm not sure how to make it go turtle mech. Um... Timing, timing, econ I think economic focus? None of these are, are okay, Thor, Thor Siege Tank. Thor BC, economic, there you go, mech, economic. Um, how about, how about Thor, <laughs> mech or Thor BC? Which one is it gonna be? No, this is what we, we're going to face against, and I'm going to show you how to beat. Thor BC sounds like the kind of kind of build we're actually quite likely oh, to good. see now from I have your attention. Uh, <laughs> is chilling for eight months. From uh, your average gold league opponent. Yes, mech, but that all roads lead to battle cruisers. And in this relatively low pressure environment, I'm going to just well, the, here's the objective. Max out. I'm going to max out with a bio army, but today, today, here's, here's the thing. I'm going to be playing bio up against Protoss and against Terran, but we're going to be playing mech against Zerg. We're going to be starting to have those matchup specific builds um, that we didn't really have in the lower leagues. And by matchup specific, I mean just the general play style. As a Terran player... Uh, you don't really have to switch up much compared to, say, 
uh, especially Protoss. That is one thing, yes, my Terran friends, that Protoss have a harder time with. It's that Protoss cannot just have the same build or the same core build in each matchup. Honestly, I would put my impression of the Elite AI, which I haven't played very much. I've, I've gotten the achievements and such, but uh, my impression of the Elite AI is it's approximately a gold or platinum player. Um, it probably depends a little bit on what units it's building. Um, some of them are just a little harder to beat than others. Like Thor BC, if you actually get to Thor Battlecruiser, those are not easy units to beat. Like... Uh, they have direct counters. In this case, Viking Siege Tank Bio. Um, or more Thors and Battlecruisers is also an option. But they're the kind of units that if you're not respecting them, can definitely ruin your day. So, uh, I'm going to use this as a bit of an assessment of the Elite AI as well. Um, I do kind of want to see what people are dealing with. I am just building a marine. We're going to get the expansion here. Yeah, I, I didn't realize there was such a spread of builds that you could choose for the AI to do. And I, I'll be honest, I bet the AI does a more consistent strategy than your average player. Oh, I'm moving that CV back. The one thing I think uh, you should avoid <laughs> against the AI is using Liberators too much. They just never really got coded correctly. The AI doesn't know what to do with Liberation Zones. So, um, abusing Liberators. I mean, let's be honest, players a lot of the time don't really know what to do with Liberation Zones, but the AI will just actively avoid them while players will dive half their army to try to kill one. Alright, I'm getting my second gas as the factory's about halfway done. Jimmy, I want to be able to hear. I'm still starting with the 111. Kind of the beauty of Terran. This is one of the strengths of Terran. Um, I forgot to send an SCV scout out, but one of the strengths of Terran is that uh, they can kind of work off, like the 111 is a tree, okay? It's the trunk, and you can branch any direction you'd like. You see a lot of different builds at the highest level, uh, like Hero Marine, Maru, like you'll see multiple barracks or uh, just quick 3cc. I don't recommend that. Those are more... Ooh, those are more playing off of other players' expe expectations rather than being, like, the most stable build order, especially on the ladder. So I generally don't recommend um, getting too creative with the early production. AI yeah, is always very diligent. All right, Billy Bob... Gonna go out to the launch tower. I'm building a tank. It is TVT. All right, I said we're adding advanced units. Is it time? I'm gonna build a Raven. And at 35 workers, 35, I'm gonna add, usually in TVT, a lot of the time you'll add your gases even quicker. Cause um, Marines just aren't that good until they get their upgrades. They uh, don't compete nearly as well as things like Ravens, Vikings. So we're going to be using a Raven, but the key point here is is we're not as focused on the bio units early. The Raven is mostly, do I need to defend myself? Okay. I'm getting two more depots. Getting two more racks. Honestly, the racks were a little late. Two in here. Dropping mules. Hot key the raven on three. Control one. 
a click on the watchtower, shift, one, two. Control, one, shift, one, two. Sending those marines out. So, I'm going to move the starport over to the reactor, the barracks over to the tech lab. We're going to build six Vikings. Hmm. We'll start with four. We'll do four Vikings. Our troops with enemies. Show our start force. those NG bays. I should have started them earlier. The entire build's a little slow. But as I'm building off of two bases, three rocks, factory and starport, I want to get my third command center. That third CC. So three racks to third CC. Ideally before 50 SCVs. Some more depots at this point. Just somewhere out of the way. I'm going to scan now. In between the bases. Engineering Bay. Vikings. I'm rattling the starport to the Raven, but that's a little much detail. Doesn't need to be done. Get my 1-1 one, one started. And we can easily get barracks 4 and 5 here. Get out of there, SUV. Queuing up a few more Vikings. You're not stuck, right? I just didn't rally. Okay, it's not, it's fine. It's fine. As the third CC is done, the third CC and going out to take it is when you have to start worrying about defending more locations. This is why so many players, and oh yeah, we're using the patroller lords. We're gonna pretend we have patroller lords. So I'm gonna shift patrol. Uh, bro. Command center Bruh. operate is finished. Time to kill enemy. Are you just Research is ready. Elite. <laughs> so as we saw in the Zerg low APM challenge, patrolling Church workers on the edge bases man. is not only just for training yourself to look at the minimap more often, but also honestly, up through platinum. So many players are are uh, deathly afraid of taking their third at their third. No you might know because you're one of them. But we're not afraid of that. They're afraid of us. So I'm getting an armory. I'm still building. Start combat shield. Honestly, if you have the money, probably should queue up combat shield at some point so you don't forget it. I'm going to scan for his third. Oh my god, he's out macroing me. I got an armory on the way. And at this point, by the time I saw multiple starports, I should have realized it was mech. Honestly, when you set the build of the AI, it's not that helpful because you're kind of you kind of know what to expect and that's in your head. I'm trying not to do that. I think it is better if you're going to play the AI to just have random builds. Because you don't want to start building against what you know is coming. That's definitely not going to help you uh, on the ladder. Alright. I'm going to get a few turrets. As you take your third is the best time to, to worry about those. Oh, what do we have here? Well, he has a couple tanks. We'll siege up. Oh, my ravens and such. You said you were economically focused, you lied! I didn't have my raven and vikings in front. He just kind of came out of nowhere because I had no vision. That was a, a pretty big mistake by me for that to happen. I should have had like a marine or a supply depot or something. Big fan of the building buildings or having workers. Things that can't easily be ruined by the select army hotkey. Um, essentially. As well as just if you're control grouping types of units. Alright, let's be honest. I got 82 workers. Really, the most you need as Terran is 75. But 
it, it's not bad to have 85, because you'll probably end up losing some at some point. Over 85 is pushing it, for sure. Uh, you have mules if you need them. It's already hard enough to spend the money. I'm going to scan. Where is your army, bro? That's a battle cruiser. All right. So add some more starports. So the uh, Raven has three distinct spells. It is no longer the massive splash damage dealer. It, it was back in Wings of Liberty. It's got auto turret, which is like a little baby turret. That only lasts 10 seconds, but it does, uh, it's like three times the damage of a marine. So it is quite significant. It's got interference matrix, which can disable both mechanical and psionic units. So occasionally you see it used against queens and Templar, though that is very rare. Um, and then the anti-armor missile, which reduces the armor of units by three which means they can go into the negative and take additional damage. Fun fact, in 2v2, this means they can take additional damage from hallucinations because the hallucinations do zero damage plus three. Uh, so that is it, armor and shield. That is important to note. So it's, it's more like just defense lowering but but we're not going to get too specific so it's it's plus three damage effectively to your attacks uh the reason this is not i guess the technical situation hallucinations could do damage in 1v1 all right we're gonna go ahead disable the tanks here if possible uh is if you anti-armor missile your own army um, is what could be an issue. Alright. So, we're gonna get some Vikings. Focus on maxing out. So, I've got essentially my two main pieces. We're not gonna worry about three different control groups. I've got my air, which includes my raven. And then I've got my ground control group. In order to siege my tanks, usually what I do is control click on the tanks. They're pretty thick. So it's pretty easy to usually just click them. But if you're concerned about that, you can put them on like the two key or something. Some players will do that. So just good standard practice. I'm going to shift one, two, three, control one, a few marines out ahead. Because I don't want to walk into the whole army like it just did. And die because of it. Gonna scan where I want to go. There's some units there. So we'll keep the air back here. We're gonna add some reactors, a fusion core, another armory. I'm going to get the tanks sieged up in range of this planetary fortress. There's the army. I'm going to anti-armor missile here. Poorly. <laughs> that was actually really terrible. Uh, you can put it, it's very nice on the battle cruiser, which has a lot of base armor. So, the benefit of the bio army over just the, the pure mech army is you can build all the good parts of the mech army, but you're more mobile because your core units are bio units. The risk is if you only use one control group, mech is better. Like, just straight up, if you you can only use one control group for your army, mech is better. Because the whole army kind of moves in a similar way. But if you're able to use, like, an air and a ground control group, bio is usually a better option until it becomes a stalemate. That is why most TVTs at the pro level are bio armies for a while. Um, 
That is why Marine Tank continues to be one of the best armies. It's just because Marines are an amazing core unit and they come cheap. The only downside is they don't win on their own. They do need some support, especially against mech. In this case, the best way is to just get air control. If you can build enough Vikings and still have a bio tank ground... Well, notice what happened to the bio. I essentially have a mech army here. But I can replenish it pretty quickly with, with Marines. If I keep just the Vikings and tanks alive and the Marines die, well, that's a success. Like, that's, that's the ideal situation. The upgrades, as soon as I switched into Vikings, so plus two mech weapons, that's your, that's your cap. You don't need plus three. Plus two mech weapons means you kill tanks in one less hit. Because remember the weapon upgrades scale and armor upgrades do not. So it only takes three shots to kill a tank as opposed to four, which means you potentially could siege up and start firing and still kill a tank before they killed you. Though it's a little blurry depending on exactly when the tanks are firing. Of course, if they also have plus two, it's the same thing. Why are tanks so loud? I keep having to turn this down. Oh my god. Okay. God. Uh, the downside of having too many tanks is your eardrums, of course. As we see here. Um, your eardrums will not thank you. So usually what I do, control click the tanks, E, and sieges them up. Tab, more Viking production. High sec auto tracking, Neo Steel armor. So if it became kind of a stalemate so remember i told the ai to go for thor battle cruiser and i have seen zero thors so typical gold player i got rushed by thors and battle cruisers like one he didn't have any thors and two that was like three battle cruisers like, <laughs> and also it was 12 minutes in that's not what a rush is <laughs> You can't just say, I wasn't ready for it, therefore it was a rush. Though that does seem to be the prevailing um, philosophy. So, the part of the reason, especially as Terran, I like to keep the two key open instead of using it for, like, tanks, is I do like to have, especially in TVT, two different attacks. So what I'll do is I'll have my main army on one, my specialty units on three, and then I'll have like a secondary attack on two. That is definitely a higher level move because uh, Terran armies can fall apart very quickly. Like if you just, for example, say you only move your tanks and they have one liberator, well then you've now lost your tanks, right? So you do have to be a little careful with that. Does that hold position split work for splitting marines quickly? Um, I'm not sure. There is no hold position split besides hold position when the units are already split. But it doesn't split them. You still have to, like, and then hold position. I mean, some players will use hold position once they pre-split with marines. Um, but if you're in a position at this level where you need to pre-split, you're wrong. Uh, is the summary. You 
Does not want to give up, does it? Without tanks over here. Um, it's a tough time. Might as well just grind my way through, pretty much. Is that not a planetary? Oh, I could have just attacked. That would have been fine. Sir. At least this is giving you a realistic idea of how Terran players usually play. So, I'll give you this. Building a barracks. Oh my god. No. Okay. Thank you. So my summary, honestly, it's macro was solidly platinum. But the decision making and micro was probably like gold. So I, if I had to rank the elite AI based on that game, I'd give it like platinum three. Because it did make a very solid amount of units. So I can see why if you're focused more on the micro side of things rather than the macro, you could find yourself feeling outgunned. Because it definitely, like, honestly, its supply was, was quite good. We can go back. Um, the sheer amount. Okay. D like, uh, oh, oh, yeah, it, wow, it had five bases. Insane. This is actually way too greedy. By the way, it has the money. It could have maxed out even quicker. Oh my god, look at this base layout. I know it. Oh, it's so efficient. It's uncomfortably efficient. Like, oh my god. Does it ever max out or does it just kind of decide to attack at some point? It doesn't quite max out, but it does have 70 workers. So... You know, it's it's honestly probably like a high gold, low platinum, I think. At least this version. I know there are different versions, but I was a little impressed. It definitely it it had a potential if it if it that itself produce a little more to be a threat. Like it was not a pushover. Just didn't seem to really know how to use the liberators very well overall, but So yeah, did I? Well, it's all right. Calm down, Maru. <laughs> uh, just because machines can do it. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I think most of that is worker micro. The AI has always been a little weird about it. Um, just constantly, especially the Elite AI, constantly micros those SCVs around. But, let's go to something a little more predictable. Oh, we're actually silver one. We're not even gold yet. So wait, bring up those requirements. For some reason, it's more the ranking system than the ease. I have won every game, uh, except for a couple placement matches as Zerg so far. I mean, the stream snipers I have thrown a few games against because uh, we're not giving them the time of day. But... Um, Protoss just got the short end of the stick and how much MMR you gain per win, so. But, with that said, starting in the Silver League of Terran, um, I think that was an appropriate. I think trying to max out and beat the Elite AI, you can do it! Alright, believe in yourself. Is a good warm-up. And then, go play the ladder. It'll probably be easier. Especially the economic focus. The AI macroed better than 90% of actual Silver Leaguers. I guarantee you that. And it didn't macro that well, but it did it better. And it was kind of a weird build, too. I wonder if it would be better at, like, just your standard marine tank. We'll see. I mean, we're not going to see. We're going to play players now. But I, like, I don't want to discourage people. There, I could definitely see losing to it. Like, it wasn't like a pushover. It was partially because, obviously, I'm focusing and I know how to not panic and also max out quickly. But 
it definitely was more efficient than your average Silver League build order. Mm. So, what are we up against? I said we're going to play Mech against Zerg. I think Mech, as Loco knows, is strong against players who are unwilling to micro. And even though... Uh, and we're going to go over some comments to this end. I'm going to describe what the counter is. Even though I'm teaching you Silver League Zergs how to use Vipers, which is a complicated process. N like, remember, I'm throwing most of the sarcasm out the window for this. This is an educational series, even if most of you are using it to fall asleep to because it's way too long each episode. But at the end of the day, uh, we're trying to learn something. So... When I do say it here, uh, I am I am trying to give you actual advice, and it's not angry, Coach. Unless I make it clear it is. Just FYI. So. So with those Zerg players learning Vipers, as long as you don't run into one of the ones watching the Zerg low APM challenge, the only real efficient counter to mech as Zerg our vipers. Oh, well. First things first, he's on one base. We got the reason you send the SCV out at the timing I did, which is before the, uh, which is like the 17th worker, about the one minute mark, it gets sent across the map, is so that way by the time you decide whether or not to expand on the low ground, you know whether he has. So we saw a baneling nest, we saw a spawning pool, um, and right now, I already had the money to expand. I'm going to expand. I'm going to make a factory. And I'm going to get a bunker. I don't need a bunker immediately. And I can get a reactor because you can't just, like, magically make banelings. Like, it do that's not how it works. He still needs to build the zerglings and get them across the map. I'm just going to have this SCV patrolling here. So, I'm building a bunker. Uh, and I'm going to be willing to uh, abandon it as well. I got to be quick on that. That is the one thing. Now with the factory building, we're going to get some more gas. Banling bus are no longer really the threat they once were. This is a lot because uh, oh, we built the banelings at home. So I'm actually going to get a widow mine. A tank will not be done in time is the situation. So... A widow mine will be my more regular defense. All right, he wants this base, he can have it. I'm not gonna worry about blocking it. It's not really my problem. A widow mine. I said we're doing some specialty units here as well. I'm gonna put it on the top of the ramp. So what this means is the widow mine will probably die after it attacks. But all you gotta do is defend a little bit on these attacks. All I gotta do is is cut down on the unit count. So I'm dropping more mules. I'm gonna get another depot. Now I'll build a tank. If he had just attacked immediately, let's move this over. Get the SCV out of there. If he had attacked immediately, I wouldn't have had time to get a tank out. But here we are. Oh, the SCV lived. Let's go scout. Could you have a seat over here, sir? I don't. This is what happens sometimes. But yeah, if he had just straight up attacked, there's no way I would have had a tank in time. So that's what I was preparing for. Uh, the Widow Mine is the safer bet, usually. But now that I can, I'm just going to put the tank right over here. We were looking forward to this um, I guess he didn't... Okay, he has a Hydra Den. And, uh, well, we're going to... And, and a Spore Crawler. So he has, um... What doesn't he have? Is a... Oh my god! What a genius. All right, well. So, you might be like, well, that's devastating damage. Now, unfortunately, remember this. 
each baneling that attack that that was that was some big brain once you get a lair you can build a dropper lord so he eventually dropped in all those banes now here's the problem for him is i have mules even if i went down to zero scvs i would still be on approximately even economy with him because each of those mules is worth about five workers mining and he doesn't have many more than 10. Uh, on top of the fact, I have two command centers producing. So, and Banelings, they only attack once, and that's it. And then they die. It's very sad. Or, or glorious. I don't, you take your pick. So, what I'm going to do is knowing that he just spent a lot of his potential economy. I'm just now, now that we know... <laughs> That was clever. He completely got me. I got... That was amazing. I want to... I just want to point this out. This man has blindsided me better than Grandmasters. I just did not see that coming at all. Uh, let's just be clear about that. And now I can take... I could have taken my natural probably right after, but I wanted to just make sure I got all the basics set. Because right now I'm not particularly worried. We're going to get um move everything down there we're gonna get out of the bunker i'm not gonna salvage the bunker one of my pet peeves is people salvaging bunkers when they don't need the money like why why do you bother like it's not like i need minerals there's a tiny chance i need that bunker so i'm gonna get an engineering bay as part of the wall because remember i'm going mech of course since factories cost gas, it is a little harder to get started with mech. But I'm going to get, keep that tank over there. Move another tank down. We have 35 SCVs. That 30 to 40 is what we're adding on the production. I'm going to build a Viking for reasons that should be obvious. I'm going to use my barracks like an overlord here. Dropping mules on these bases. I'm gonna wall this off with depots. Okay, well that isn't the ideal. There's a tiny chance of mutas. Who knows with what he's been doing. So I'm gonna get a turret in each mineral line. It's just kind of a safe... If you have no idea what he's doing, and he's already shown a willingness to do some crazy stuff, I mean... I'm just gonna shift patrol. So right now, I have three command centers. Like... I am very far ahead if especially it doesn't have a um sir this man is crazy this is an absolute madman right here oh my god this is, it, it's probably just like Florencio or something oh my if, if my barracks hadn't scouted it he is four steps ahead of me and also, like, three steps ahead of himself. So he's not, like... <laughs> His brain is too large for its own good. I'm still gonna just take my third, because he shouldn't have actually any units. Is the downside of this. Um... Yeah. But, so... As as a great man, we're getting the bunker. We're getting rid of the bunker, not because I don't want the bunker, but because it's in the way now. As a great man once said, "If he's doing something weird, uh, go fucking kill him." So I would say taking a hatchery on my side of the map counts. So I'm just going to move out with these units. Oh, nope. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Okay. We're gonna get those tanks sieged up here. Because apparently we're fighting here now. That's what we're doing. Oh my god. He's got swarm hose! That's crazy! Okay, so we're gonna build more banshees as well. He's adding more loc- Oh, there's even more swarm hose! 
So the counter to Swarm Hose is trying to stop them from even really starting. So this was a mistake by him because uh, he, he select all army, including his Swarm Hose. Well, I did lose all my tanks, which kind of sucks. Another armory. Yeah, at this point, we need to... Like, you're on the clock against Swarm House. You're essentially fighting the Locust, which can pop every 45 seconds. This isn't Ricky. This is Ricky and the boys right now. Uh, which is much more dangerous. These are completely intentional Swarm Hosts. I got it. Hats off. That was, uh... Yeah, that... Wow. Um... Yeah. That was quite a thing. So yeah, the AI doesn't prepare you for everything. Did I fail? Yes. I, I got a little panicky there. I just, I mean, there you go. Check your corners, doors and corners. That's where they get you. I <laughs> oh my. Um. Good, now I have your attention. Wonder Gaming is now chilling. Okay, apparently that will never be fixed. Because Jimmy will never fix it. But, I uh, gifting. I owe the people one. He actually was still pretty dangerous throughout. Notice the, uh, the Baneling hit. You can see it there. Notice how my worker count plummets to exactly the same. And that is, that is the issue with Banelings, is... They're just not... They're not a great early game unit because it's almost impossible to come out ahead. Um, they they are pretty much I want to win the game, and if you don't, you're behind. Um, because those banelings are costly. Later on in the game, like when you're maxed out with a bank, they're more of just increasing the the strength of your army because they are better than just one more zergling. And they're really the only way to increase the strength when you're maxed out. If you want win, don't relax. All right, TVT. One, one, one. Into three racks, into three CC. Into tank. Marine, Medivac, Viking. More Vikings if he shows a tendency to go down that road to battle cruisers. More tanks if he's heavy on Marines. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. That's, that's all of it. Otherwise, you're just producing, like, you're regularly producing Marines. If, he go, if he's going Mac, like Hellbats, Thors, or tanks, that's when you mix in Marauders. The reason you don't usually mix in Marauders yeah, against another marine tank player. Detected. Though I'm not saying... Jack Boy underscore production Jack Boy. For six I'm not saying that you shouldn't like necessarily, but the reason at the higher levels you don't is because marines just pound for pound are more cost effective. Like, you might be like, well, marauders take out tanks. No, tanks take out marauders. Tanks and marauders do extra damage to armored. Which one you think is more likely to get more hits off? Uh, so making a tank is, making Marauders is a liability, not a benefit against tanks most of the time. So, he has, uh, he may go for a command center. I'm going to set my SCV in the corner over here. Get a reactor, though that could be a mistake. I did say we're doing matchup specific builds now, but so TVT, a lot of the time players will get a Reaper to start. Um, and as you move up, the Reaper becomes tougher and tougher to deal with. 
The actual high level opener is three Reapers and two Hellions. But that is a very micro intensive, like an unnecessarily micro intensive opener. It has just as much tendency to backfire unless you know exactly what you're doing. And let's not lie to ourselves here. So I'm going to send that SCV in. We'll see if he has a command center. And if he doesn't, I'm going to build a bunker. Looks like he's doing something very similar here. Remember, scouts and SCVs. Scouts and drones. Scouts and probes. Scouts and SCVs. We actually saw he had a factory and had started a starport. Alright, I'll start my own starport. Gonna get a tech lab here. And one more SCV. Eh. Should be getting the gas. TVT is very gas heavy to start. Getting the gas, usually at least a third gas before 30 workers. It is unique to this matchup because you ju uh, against high tech units, you need your own high tech units. That's the summary. Uh. If you don't have tanks or Vikings against tanks and Vikings, like, Marines are just not going to cut it. Against Zerg, you can usually get away with Marines and Hellions. Against Protoss, it takes them four to five minutes before they have those high-tech units, whereas Terrans uh, can build them quite quick. So I'm going to send a Marine to his third, both thirds, which also happen to be a tech paths. Another Marine out here. Put these two in gas. Barracks two and three. I should have built a depot. Spore 20. Except in this case, it's just scouting depot. Um, let me get a couple in the corners. Getting a raven. That is our specialty unit for this game, is the raven. Engineering base as well come up after the um after the barracks if you're really greedy very greedy builds get them before the wrecks i don't recommend it. it's you need to have the units to benefit from the upgrades and that is sometimes quite hard to do unless you get the barracks first flipping these over adding reactors I'm gonna get this gas. Start some Vikings. Rally them to the Raven, which I'm gonna patrol on the edge of my base. Start Stim. Marine. Make sure my production is all set. Not a bad time to scan. I like the idea. I just got the energy. Looks like he's going up bio. The counter scan, but it is the timing for the second scan on the natural. Speaking of more bases, though, I do have the money now to get supply blocked. Nailed it. Let's queue up some more depots and shift click back. If I had the energy, I would supply drop right now, but I do not. Adding the Vikings into the control group. I'm going to queue up combat shield so I don't forget... It is ridiculously... Combat Shield is the upgrade, like, the probably the highest, um, the most important upgrade that people usually forget. Like, I see more Terrans getting an armory for plus two or plus three before they realize they don't have Combat Shield. Combat Shield, which provides more HP effectively than all the armor upgrades combined in most scenarios. So, on top of the fact it just gives you more of a health pool when you stim, which is kind of important. But yeah, Combat Shield is forgotten way too often. It's occasionally forgotten in pro matches as well. Like, <laughs> it's one of those you should never... Oh, micro God! Oh, he's mad. 
I'm gonna scan. Not because I want to see what his army is, but because I didn't get to see if he has upgrades. He doesn't. So that means my 1-1 one, one is quicker, though since I'm not starting 2-2 two, two immediately, that means uh, I won't necessarily have a 2-2 two, two advantage. Just build all the depots. We got production exploding here. Reactors. Remember, I'm taking my third, so I'm going to get some uh, turrets as well. Looks like he wanted to take his third based on what he was doing there. Can, I'm going to use select all army. I'm going to select all the Vikings and press shift three to put them in with my uh, main control group. Shift. Click off one marine in three different areas there. I have plenty of SCVs over here. Gonna get sensor tower, two, two, and plus one mech. So now we're gonna start getting, as I get three bases, that's when you gotta have a little bit more vision, right? So, some more Marines. Get those medevacs involved. I'm getting a sensor tower. Spotter depots. I now have 69 workers and counting. Which is nice enough, but we're going to aim for 75 to 80. It should have happened. Your minerals is ended. Take a look at what he's up to. He has zero, zero, which means I will have two, two. So now I have a timing. Timings are not when you decide to move out. Ideally, and if you watch closely, you'll see a lot of high level Terrans doing this, is when you're like 20, 30 seconds away, you move out of your base. So that way you maximize the amount of time you use your new upgrades. Ideally, you're also maxed out, especially with uh, two, two. I'm just adding all the production facilities here. Oh, a follower. Thank you, SSM. Is that all? SSM one twenty one is chilling. A couple barracks, a factory, a starport. So I've got all those things. All right, I've got the Vikings, and it's time to move out. I'm going to still build. We're going to build a fourth command center behind it. I'm going to scan. We're going to get plus two mech weapons. We'll get all these add-ons, reactors, and a tech lab on the factory. Start plus three, plus three. One more scan, okay, and stim, as well as put vikings in position. We're gonna use anti-armor missile over here. We'll get some auto turrets as well. Honestly, lost a lot of marines there. On the bright side, we still have vikings, so. That means we need to focus on producing at home. I'm gonna build plenty of marines. I'm gonna transfer some workers from my first two bases over to the fifth base, it should have which I'm gonna put on a camera location key. Looks like this is going pretty well. We'll move some of the tanks into his natural. But I'm uh, mostly focusing back at home, building another army. So when he eventually deals with this one, I have another better army ready to win the game. I have more Vikings there. We're going to get this gas. Might as well get some more uh, command centers. I 
I should have built some towards the uh, north side. Your army is under attack. Time to fight. Move back. Come on, finally. Our units get to your grade. Build some more Vikings out of the uh, starports here. Getting gas. At this point, the later the game goes, you don't want to give up on Marines. But things like Vikings and tanks become very important. Alright, let's just move this army in together. Upgrade complete. Let all await them. The enemy attacked our forces. We're gonna scan. He has a couple tanks. But I have 3-3 three, three upgrades. I'm gonna control click the tanks and siege. We're gonna scan. So now his economy is obviously not incredible. Uh, as he doesn't really have any other base. True. It's true. The intent of what we're doing here today is to not seem like Silver League, but instead a temporarily embarrassed Platinum. I'll give him the free win if he likes, obviously. But he at least took a third on location. I will give him that credit as well. The upgrade's a bit late. Uh, the army supply a little lacking, but a third on location is already further than your average Silver Leaguer. All right. We're going to use some of those drop skills that we learned in a previous episode. Unload that marine. Shift E. Oh no. We still won the air fight. It was a little dicier. I mean, we can bring the rest. Yeah. I have vision of all but one base here, so. Just building Marine. I can build over 60 APM of Marines per minute. Which is the struggle right now. Um, oh, that Viking's still intact. He actually has enough army. Though, the... I don't know if we made it. That's the downside of going to the later game. We could easily accomplish this challenge on two bases. It's just once you get 3,000 minerals a minute, which is completely feasible. We did it! Not a single Appam's over 60. Does it ever make sense to land Vikings? Vikings actually killed tanks pretty quick. If you win the air fight, 
and you have nothing else to deal with it. Vikings are the quick and dirty way. They're also pretty good against probes and SCVs with bonus mechanical. It's very easy to overcommit though, as the animation time is quite long unless you have smart service. Uh, as well as like they're not they're not very tanky units. So instead of doing an APM challenge, you should do an EPM challenge. Let me be the first to uh, tell you that that's essentially what we're doing. Um, it's just EPM doesn't show up easily on the score screen and nobody searches for it on YouTube. But if you're saying I should limit my effective actions per minute, right now the, I, the entire point of the whole series is to make it only effective actions as opposed to uh, superfluous ones, like say microwing Vikings. EPM is effective APM, so. Um, that is a stat that is tracked to an extent, but it is a little subjective as well. Then you could build more Marines. So you're saying, no. Okay. No, I, I think we're, we've got to, we're going to stick to the format. Um, 60 APM and silver. So, for those who don't know, uh, or haven't heard, the statistics are taken from over 3 million games. I keep forgetting we have SC2 stats or elite codes to give away. I gotta get those set up. But, uh, 3 million games last year were uploaded SC2 re replay stats. Below Masters. Bronze to, bronze to Masters. The APMs... These are at least 10 lower than the average of tens of thousands of games for each race in each league. So the idea is to show you guys how to win the majority of your games. Now, probably not every game. Obviously, I have a little more experience. But how to win a significant percentage of your games while playing slower than the average player of your race. Because a lot of people think it the obvious... I don't know if it's as true nowadays, but for many years, people just correlate faster with better. And the lowest hanging fruit, the most obvious statistic, is actions per minute. Like, there's literally a counter in the game showing you it. People brag about it. Like, uh, but that is really, one, misleading. Um, and two... Well, one misleading and two good clickbait is is the second part really, but uh, because people are easily misled by that statistic. Like, obviously you can't, you're not gonna get to Intel Extreme Masters with 60 APM. But as you can see by the comments of like, ha, that guy had three times as much and he still lost. Like that is a surprising thing. No, that's that's exactly what we're we're trying to do here. Cause I do think it is the most frustrating thing for people who are actually trying to get good. And legitimately, it's it's hard to learn. It's very easy to think that playing faster equals playing better. Even if you don't necessarily learn anything. Um, and I think a lot of people get frustrated because they see themselves like the APM goes up, but the ladder points do not. Like, uh, down to the people who will comment like, oh my god, you have such low APM. Like, you don't even deserve this win. Uh, I don't know how many of those count. I've definitely seen them in the past, probably not as much anymore. But that used to be something of an insult, and still an insult, right, Protoss players? But if you're like, I don't, I don't actually have, I forgot where I was going with this as I was trying to remember what build we're doing. And that, instead of having a meta commentary every game, how about we just do a regular commentary of, I'm going to go for a tank first. We're going to start with Widowmine drops in gold. The on, basicest the of all basic Widowmine drops. Nothing crazy, but the most basic. That that is going to be our advanced unit in this matchup. 
and the gold leg. The reason we don't go for mech against Protoss, like, I'm not going to be going for mech, is because, honestly, it's brittle. It's a very brittle composition. It actually, in my opinion, takes more APM to make a reliable mech army uh, against Protoss than it does a bio army. Um, with a bio army, you just need to add in the right units. You need to make sure you have, say, enough Vikings or some ghosts, maybe. But with a mech army, you constantly have to be babysitting your tanks. You have to make sure you're not out of position, covering warp prisms. You don't really have the flexibility of of an army that can just stim its marines. It's just that a lot of people get locked into that marine marauder medevac and don't really branch outside of it is why they struggle so much against protein and i'm i'm including myself i i don't build ghosts in my games nearly as much as i should what do we have here well somebody re is religiously against the idea of going over 16 probes on a base um which just to reiterate is something you can do just just fine like it's, you actually get more. It's not better to long distance mine, is the summary. I'm gonna scan and see. I bet his text in his main. We're just gonna scan the main. Twilight, Robo, Forge. A little bit of everything here. Hmm. Drop some mules. I'm gonna get. I mean, those are the most standard things to be getting. I'm going to patrol a Viking on the edge of my base. Adonis ready. Finally, Adonis Against Protoss, I'm getting two tech labs, because Marauders are much better. It's not the same situation. Uh, Marauders definitely have much more of a place against Protoss than they do against Terran, because you're not contending with tanks. You're contending with... Things like Stalkers and Colossi. They're not very good against Charge Launch, but they're not bad either. They're pretty good at, at soaking up the splash damage. So overall, Marauders are definitely more of an option. Um, a stronger option against Protoss. Get that third command center. Let me get some depots on the edge of my base. I'm gonna send a marine out. Maybe maybe I build some of those marauders I've been talking about. I'm actually gonna cancel the marines and get a couple marauders out. Gonna get an armory. Let's build barracks four and five. I started the armory. So we're gonna Let's just go see what we can see here. Get concussive shells. And... I... He's building more gateways. He's walling off, but I'm a Terran. All my units except my best one are ranged. So... That actually should help me. Oh, he's got a lot of immortals there. We're gonna siege up the tanks. And then stim. If he is going to keep the immortals at the front, then... Let's move those siege tanks up. These are going to be reactors. This is an orbital. Control F1 to select all idle workers. I'm going to move those tanks up there. I'm going to bring the reinforcements. Stim the marines. We're going to take the third over here. Start 2-2. Two, two. Another tank. 
Essentially, the only thing that would have made me turn around is are something like Archons or maybe a couple Colossi. I would have had to rethink it. But now, since I've got plenty of medevacs, I'm going to start building Liberators. Liberators are a special unit for this game. New subscriber. To mm -hmm. There were chilling for 23 months. You got this nice easy. I'm going to target that pylon and we're going to target the Nexus. And as we take another base, I want to get the uh, bunker, which I'm going to protect with depots and also because I need depots. He kind of showed us what he was doing as well. Building some more marines, queuing up some tanks. We saw the uh, probes transferring here. So, no nexus. So, worker pat patrol time. And if he only has two bases, control F1, select all idle, get the gas. I'm just going to get mech armor upgrades for now. I'm going to scan. He has Colossi. He has Archons. And he has this base he's taking. So. Alright. So. We're going to use some of those Protoss tactics that I was showing. The one, two. I'm going to attack over to one side. I'm going to drop the main. Why am I going to do that? Because he has a limited economy. I killed most of his army, so he's going to have to choose a location to defend. What is the more valuable location to kill? It's actually his third. So I'm, I'm going to scan. There's the army. Gonna load up into those medevacs. Drop the corner of the main. Make sure I'm producing. Move these forward. I'm just gonna siege up the liberators here. Stim this army. Looks like he decided to fight, so that means we can just stim through. So what we do is we focus on making sure he can't counterattack and kill me now. That's the most important part. Gonna get some more star ports, usually the best option. He's got these robotics facilities we can depower. Send these guys back. We can pull the boys as well. When is the time right to get ghosts? If he had gone with a lot of Archons early, or if he had um, Templar or just a lot of Zealots, I would have focused on getting ghosts more. Uh, ghosts are quite hard to use. Um, they are the best unit in the game, but... Uh, so ghosts are still a little, I think, out of reach at the moment. <sighs> I tried to minimize it. I mean, honestly, I still think it is impressive to come out with under 70 despite doing an efficient double drop or like a double pronged attack. Part of it comes down to the fact I'm building almost 50 units, nearly 50 units a minute. Oh yeah, looks like Macrosoft comes out ahead of Apple on this one. Looks like substance beats style every time. I don't know. Your mass gateway. We're no match. For good old fashioned Terran. But yeah, it is a bit much. Like I probably 
could have been okay. I think there's a big risk um, in overdoing it on drops. That's one of the things I see from Terran players all the time. It's it's like, I'm going to drop for the sake of dropping. But the you got to have... You tell me your objective with that drop, and I'll believe you. Okay? Thank you. Um, but is your objective to drop... Well, that's not an objective. The objective there was to make him decide between the third and the main. And and since, I'll be honest, a Terran army, controlling a Terran army against a Protoss army with multiple forms of splash damage is dicey. It's hard to come out ahead reliably. So the idea is to minimize the chances of that even happening by making it so either he loses his third or he loses his main. Um, and that was only because I was already ahead. If I was not ahead, or like if the fight hadn't gone so well at the start, I would have just started adding in more units to my main arm. Like Vikings for the Colossi, Liberators to help with the Archons and everything else. Maybe Ghosts if he got too many Archons. Um, but we are still kind of Waiting on the ghost a little. That's a, that's a gold league thing, just like Whittle Mines. Though the opponent was in that league. I think just getting used to liberators. I usually will hockey the liberators uh, as well, unlike Control 2. Many times I use the same method as siege tanks, which is control clicking them before the fight. But then you have... The, the difficult part is then you have two different forms of siege. Um, and that gets quite clunky to control. And two... Di like, you, you want liberators to usually be covering the areas your siege tanks can't easily do so as well. Like, may, whether they're at the front of the fight to zone the army out um, or covering... A, a flank from a direction you're scared of usually the front of the fight to be honest but you do run the risk if you don't hotkey them individually of them wandering into the stalkers and dying or embarrassingly sieging up directly over the army because that's when you were able to get control of them uh, so let's let's be honest here we've all done it Do you group your Liberators with Vikings? I usually do not. Because the Liberators have a very different role. New subscriber detected. Liberators are not anti-air. Um, liberators months. are a siege unit. They're just an alternate to siege tanks. Usually superior. Um, at least in many scenarios. The, in... The time siege tanks are often uh, superior. Well, I mean, siege tanks come out of the factory. They don't share the starport time. That's that's part of the benefit. Because you do need enough medivacs that you can actually heal your units from their stims, let alone the enemy. Usually that number is four to six medivacs. If you go too high on the medivacs, well, that's when either dropping becomes more of a, an attractive option or something you need to deliberately avoid because you're going to bait yourself into it. So, be very careful with those things. Single lib harass in early game. In my experience, single liberator harass in the metal leagues has a tendency to do just as much damage to the player who's staring at their liberator willing it to do a bunch of damage as the person they're trying to do damage to this is why we avoid the early reapers and zerglings and other units like that is because while it might feel like you're accomplishing something many times you're shooting yourself in the foot as well though your opponent may not realize it it is very simply a matter of being able to split your attention there is no such thing as truly multitasking 
Like, you only have two hands, and you can only look at one screen at a time. But between manipulation of the production queue, uh, as well as shift queuing things, and being able to rotate quickly between different parts of the map, you can effectively simulate being multiple places at once. And that's part of why, despite that Terran player who had almost double my APM, he recognized I probably wasn't silver. Though I doubt he expected to have significantly more APM than me. Because it makes it feel like they're playing at this speed. But instead it's just efficient usage of, of shift queue, of preparing your macro before your micro, stuff like that. Come on, Santa upgrade is finished. Time to kill enemy. Madonna's ready. So sometimes against Terran, uh, you might want to go Cyclone first as an anti-air option. Here's the thing. Our Terran friend over there, I didn't really comment on it, but he had a second command center in his base right off the bat, which means he built a command center before me. I'm not in any sort of imminent danger. So I'm just going to get my second and third racks. I'm going to start building depots around the edge. Going to get more gas. Finally, our dawn is complete. And we're still going to try the Raven to start. That's the special unit this game. It is the, is the Raven. But got to be careful to make sure it has its own hotkey. Otherwise, it's going to end up flying over anything on its own. All right, we're gonna get those two engineering bays. Come back here. Your army is under attack. Time gonna to get fight. two reactors. Another depot and a third command center. All right. Five minutes, what are you up to? It's a battle cruiser. So. We, uh, thankfully, we already have the counter. I've got a raven. Oh my god, I got not one, but two SCVs stuck. You might be like, get a medevac, get them out. Well, we're not building medevacs for a while, so I'm sorry. Thank you for your service, SCVs. But you're in my supply. I'm gonna get one. Remember, turrets don't counter battle cruisers that they can slow them down. So, gonna get one turret in each mineral line. We're just gonna be building Vikings for a while. Start stem. In order, Vikings, Ravens, and Cyclones are your best defenses. Vikings, just because they straight up uh, can outrange the battlecruiser and trade very well. Ravens, because they can disable them, or anti-armor, or auto-turret. Pretty much anything you do but fly directly into them and die. And Cyclones punch through their armor, because technically their lock-on ability is ability damage, which is unaffected by armor, and does flat uh, health damage. So, But the Cyclones are by far the most finicky, and they delay units out of your factory, so that's not always the ideal choice. I'm going to have one cyclone here, and it's going to patrol the main, because what I expect to happen is at some point he just on, jumps in, probably to my main, but we'll see. Queue up that combat shield. Going to get some depot drops because I messed up the supply depots. We're going to scan. He's got a Thor. Um, we don't know about the cruisers, but I'm going to go take my third. Oh, looks like Billy Bomb doing a good job. Got a scout on those battle cruisers. I think that was two. And we're going to move over to that third base. I 
start ship weapons. I usually wouldn't go for that. He's out here somewhere. We're gonna disable the battle cruiser, which means it cannot jump. And there you go. That's why opening up battle cruisers is usually not great against Terran because they can just outright directly deal with it. Like Zerg, and to an extent Protoss, don't have such direct counters. Terran does. Uh, they know how to beat their own stuff. Ship three. I'm gonna I'm gonna set up some turrets up here. I'm getting sensor towers. Kind of all over the place, to be honest. I've got a ground army, but when you see someone going for fusion core, I mean, every once in a while you'll get one of the big brain players who's like, I'm actually just going ground and I'm going to ignore the fact I have this unit. Or of this uh, fusion core. But at this level, uh, <laughs> if you see a fusion core, you, you know. All right, we know. We know where that's going. Yeah, 75 SCVs. How many more depots are we gonna need? Seven should cut it. Adonis ready. It should has been completed. Time to show more the ship weapons. No more mineral things with you. Finally, Adonis complete. Let's scan. I mean. So, before we do any sort of timing, I'm gonna add more starports. Four medevacs is all we're gonna end up with. Vikings are not a bad choice to help on the ground as well. He's scanning all my bases. Let's get another one. Might as well get another armory. Plus three, plus three. He scanned that base I was building. So, I think he will try to sneak battle cruisers around. Uh, probably towards that base, though. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. Actually, I want one of these to be a tech lab. I'm gonna start just getting turrets. <laughs> Spotter turrets. We were looking forward to you. Command center upgrade completed successfully. Finally, our zone is complete. Get some more gas. So, I mean, you can also go battle cruiser. I now have more bases and more economy and probably similar upgrades. Me going battle cruiser is not out of the question. Um, to be clear on that, let's see what his upgrades are. Zero, zero. So, actually, my battle cruisers would be uh, better off. I mean, we all, we all saw that, right? <laughs> um, he knows my sensor towers are, are there. Whoa! Run away! I lost my Viking immediately. He's going through the center. No one does this. What a big brain move. Move the tanks up. Somebody learned from that Thor Battle Cruiser AI. Right, let's get Yamato. Start my own cruisers. Uh, 
He's got a lot of marines there. Which we're gonna move the tanks over here. I may lose this base. We're gonna try to repair here though. Control click. Lose the base, but he has lost his uh, his entire army in two distinct parts, which is exactly the opposite of what you'd like to do in this in this scenario. We're gonna slap down a few more command centers. Adonis ready. Gonna scan this marines. Right click, get the tanks in range of that planetary. And we're, uh, honestly at this point, the most reliable way is to have battle cruisers. Because it's not guaranteed to be able to break through dozens of planetaries. Well, maybe not dozens, but it's repairing. I could land the Vikings. Let's get smart servos. I've talked up smart servos before. Smart servos, try it today. All right. It should have happened. They do a lot of damage. So, fun fact, they do extra damage to mechanical. All Terran buildings are mechanical. Much like all uh, Zerg buildings are biological. Even the ones with the skin that makes them look mechanical. So, so they're, they're uncomfortably effective against even things like planetaries. Oh, wow. Let's see what we're dealing with here. He has 1-1 one, one upgrades. There's a lot of marines, which are surprisingly good counter here. We're gonna repair the battle. We're on auto repair here, so... Unfortunately, marines are the only Terran unit that doesn't really counter battle cruisers. Even though they can technically shoot up, that's very misleading because the battle cruisers have so much armor that, and they have more range, and they can attack while moving. So overall, the Marines struggle to get very much done. Are we still arguing about cyclones? Have we taken into account that cyclones only work if you micro them? Otherwise, they die in two hits and a strong talking to. Like, people don't usually factor that one in. So, we've made it! To the Golden League. Overall, the, the summary... Oh, yeah, we gotta get the picture first. The most important part is memes. All right. No matter how good your upgrades, it's still difficult. No, we're gold. And the limit is 70, which we reached. As a gold player. I'm kind of, uh in the line there, aren't I? I mean, I think he did quite well. Honestly, that remember at the start, we played against the elite AI going Thor Battlecruiser. I couldn't really distinguish that guy from the elite AI going Thor Battlecruiser. It was approximately the same. It was almost exactly the same like level of macro and unit composition like it that is uh and decision making so i i feel like my assessment was quite correct 
in that. Mm. Yeah. Plus three Marines do five damage a shot too. Only if you have like two upgrades on the BC can you even consider it. And I actually had plus two armor against plus one Marines. So. Well, I mean, this is a pretty solid time for a quick Q and A, but not just any. No. We have the people's questions, which we always do in Twitch chat, but not just the people who are vampires watching live, though thank you for being here. But I'd like to answer as a gold player now. Um, and we've gone over all this. I want to I wanna first um, go over the lesson plan. All right? Not that. Jimmy, oh my god, we have so much stuff. First off, what have we learned so far? 50 SCVs by 8 minutes is the goal. 1-1-1 one, one, one to start, usually with a siege tank and then maybe a raven or vikings. And then from there, at around 30 to 35 SCVs with your main and your natural, we're getting 2nd and 3rd barracks, and then 2 NG bays, and then a 3rd command center. You can do this in almost every matchup, but as long as you're focused on unit production and making sure the only time when you scout that you really need to be concerned are when a Zerg is on one base doing baneling drops or something crazy, uh, or in general if your opponent seems to be on one base, in which case you might have to build that command center on the high ground. You don't want to be overly defensive, but that is what the early scout is for. And then past that, if you have any opportunity to attack with, uh, as you're taking a third, maybe take it. But otherwise, taking the third base around 50 workers, adding on barracks four and five, or occasionally maybe those factories, uh, and looking to max out with plus two, plus two, six or seven siege tanks, and the rest marines, medevacs, and vikings. Right around 10 to 12 minutes. It's gotten us this far with... Um, unchallenged success, uh, being willing to move into things like liberators, or maybe having a widow mine or something early is important, but just generally focusing on getting that production up in a timely manner is everything. That is the big thing for silver players, um, and silver is the new bronze, as you know. And all the way up through diamond is not getting your production on time and not using it efficiently. Uh, just building those units, having more shit counters, less shit. And now, for your more specific questions, which we've collected through a painstaking process of actually reading the comments. Um, some questions and comments about, uh, the low APM challenge. So... Jimmy, I can't read this. It's too small. You cut some of it off. Um, I think I think I said something about production. All right. Well, Jimmy already fucked it up. So we'll start at the second one from Benoit. Coming in. These videos did make me play the game. He says, lost four in a row, got mad, and took the rest of the afternoon to get over it. Great game. Uh, glad you enjoy. That's the first step. Maybe next time you'll lose five. It's called building up a tolerance. Now, uh, a comment. Low APM challenge failed multiple times. I'd rather see a loss than an APM spike for the sake of a dub. Otherwise, it doesn't really help us noobs. Still love your vids, watch your commentary, and watch you religiously. I want to make it clear, at no point in any of these games... Have I just been like, we're going to throw, uh, unless it's obviously like a stream sniper or something. Um, have I been like, now I'm going to be 200 APM just to win. No, it is completely natural to go over 200 APM when you hold down the Marine key. Because you're doing a bunch of actions very quickly. Um, I've made a distinct effort to not do more than I think is necessary uh, to win at this level. I think I've simplified it. Sometimes, especially when you're really focused 
a lot of the reason that lower level players have low APM are they just don't build that many units. Much, the majority of the actions uh, so far for each race have been just building workers and units. Because remember, StarCraft is a lot more like Factorio than it is uh, your, your run-of-the-mill strategy game, especially at the lower levels. It's whoever can get their economy and their production up and running efficiently is going to have a distinct advantage later on. Sure, you can do some early cheese or shenanigans, but most of the time it is about who's able to build more, more quickly. Um, much like chess, this game scares me says FOM Scratch, um, afraid of chess, as he's known. An interesting thing. These videos have absolutely improved my AI game. Soon we'll start queuing for rank. I hope uh, between the first game and the last game we just played, um, you'll notice that many of the players playing ranked are just AI, um, but worse. So, just And then Tristan chimes in. Uh, thank you, Tristan. Just think of it as an AI that gets angry when you beat it. So, there you go. Some pro tips. Haven't played in years. Watched the first Terran video, played and lost seven games. Watched it again, now with better context. Went to Han, did much better. Can't get good by just watching. I included this because that's exactly how I did it. That's kind of how I learned StarCraft. On a, on a larger scale, but uh, it was, I have no idea what I'm doing. Huh. Oh, okay. I got it. And rinse and repeat several uh, thousand times. Adrian chimes in with, I don't watch winter, but when I do, it's when I have trouble sleeping. He does the job. Adrian, fuck you. Have a nice night. Uh, Matthias? Watch the first part. Concentrated on my macro. Doing things. Slowing in an appropriate order. Today I won 6 out of 6. It works. There you go. Matthias, you'll be receiving your check shortly. Clumsy, does anyone have his benchmarks written down? If so, hit me up, please. Now, I, I didn't write them down, though I should. Um, may Add it to the list of things to do so. But generally, <laughs> generally... Um, 50 workers by 8 minutes. Uh, 3 barracks at between 30 and 35. So, you know what? I'm going to give you the whole bill. Depot on 14. That's you rallying your first SCV should get you there. Depot on 13, actually, I guess, is what it technically is. Barracks on 16. Refinery on 17. You've got a marine at 20 as also your orbital. Your scouting on your 17th SCV. Then second command center is at 21 or 20, depending on how quick uh, or how lazy you were with your minerals. Second depot is at 22. And then you're building a couple more marines. From there, when you get 100 gas, build a factory. That's usually uh, going to be around 25 supply. And then when your factory's halfway done, a second gas. You're looking at, if you're building SCVs on both command centers now, you're looking at 27 or 28. And then when you get to 30 to 35, and you've got your starport in your factory, more barracks. I know I'm not giving you the exact timings and the supplies, but the idea is, instead of just something to copy-paste, if something goes wrong, and oftentimes it will, then you have a baseline to come back to. I think it's more important to learn when and why you're building something as opposed to exactly what uh, because a lot of players will be like well i'm at 30 supply therefore it's time for two more racks well maybe you lost some scvs uh and most of your supply is army and you can't support it uh, stuff like that can happen or you lost some army and all you have are workers and maybe you're late on your production because you need more of it stuff like that So those are your basics. And then, of course, we're taking the third CC, uh, starting it before this, starting the third CC before six minutes, and at least one engineering bay before five. If they're on one base, you need to start that NG bay by about 3.30, though, against Darren and Protoss. 
Um, Gren says, you motivate me to play SC2 again, but I found the game too demanding. At this point, I think I'm, play I'm too old to play SC2 in a competitive manner. So stick to custom games and or watching videos. I doubt that's true. And competitive is how you define it. Um, and I think it's completely okay to not be interested in the competitive part of it. But don't count yourself out yet. Uh, because a lot of those, maybe half your age, are going to wear themselves out microing Reapers on two bases while you sit there with your solid build order and one-third the APM. So I, I'm still confident, no matter how old you are, uh, if you can scrounge together 50 to 60 APM, you got a very good chance of getting at least a platinum, uh, though it might be a journey. All right, and last but not least, Manuel. You know what would make your videos perfect? Yes, they aren't. Sorry to, sorry to be the one that brings the bad news. That's okay. Thank you, Manuel. Uh, if you could mention what would be the counter to your tactics, so we can also learn how to deal with somebody doing the same thing uh, you do to win. So, on the bright side, we do have the uh, Zerg and the Protoss uh, little APM challenges, um, where we play the Zerg and the Protoss race. I know, we defile ourselves with the lesser races. Um, but you may be interested in finding those videos, which you can find on the same channel you wrote this comment. So um, you do actually have to click on the channel page as opposed to scrolling through your YouTube feed, maybe. Uh, it's possible. But thank you um, for, for bringing me the news. Less talk, more play. I don't think most people play while they're, while they're talking. Is that advice from the sad clown in, in the Twitch chat? Uh, or was that a comment? Oh, yes, I, I do stream in 1440p, but also... Less talk, more craft. I'm not, I'm not sure if you're offering advice to the people in the comments, or if you're um, commenting yourself. Cure is a champ, yes. Though Cure did struggle in Intel Extreme Matters. What counter is BC when you're Zerg? Um, the direct counter is... To wait until the end and remind me that we don't answer questions on all three races until the end, which we're not at yet. We're at the intermission. Um, and we're talking about Terran here. We're not talking about how to counter Terran. We're not going to give them that information during this video. They might not ever find the Zerg video, statistically, less people have, so... How do you counter Blizzard's updates? You just wait. How often should I be looking at the minimap? There's no right answer. But uh, the tip to patrol a worker. As you're taking a third, at least, maybe earlier, patrol a worker on the corner bases. Many times you'll find a base, but at the very least it'll get you trained to look at the minimap. So by the time you have 50 or so workers, have a worker patrolling three or four of those corner bases that are on each map. Uh, the ones that you're not usually going to see by just going across. What's a d good way to deal with a queen all-in? As a Terran, build a wall. Uh, you got in tanks, marines. Uh, the only things that don't deal with it very well are like Heli and Banshee. Um, rarely will you see a queen all-in without a Nidus against Terran. Um, but you, you gotta be careful to respect it. What I mean is one bunker usually won't cut it if it's committed. Oh, um, you may now have to retreat have to the high attention. ground. It really Stop depends on if you have enough months. bio units or, and or siege tanks. What I do when my opponent is rushing BC, you consult that last game, um, where my opponent was rushing BC. And uh, instead of instead of doing the micro time uh, as an intermission, like in the previous one, we're gonna probably just jump back in. More play, less talk, or both, really, for the people who are impatient. Um, on the bright side, we both know they weren't actually going to play StarCraft, uh, and they're just here to have some background noise and pretend to know what they're talking about. So. 
Mm-hmm. Could you describe a dream composition for Terran? The Metal League dream composition is probably uh, maybe eight tanks, six medevacs, around 60, 70 supply of bio, and then the rest is a starport unit that will be most effective, either Vikings or Liberators. The dream composition for Terran at the pro level is more like 10 ghosts, 10 ranged liberators, uh, 10 widow mines, like four medevacs, four tanks, and whatever bio you can fit in. Uh, of course, that is a lot of different things to do. So, All right, and then back. Aim for gold too, but we'll see how far we get tonight. What, what, what can you practice solo, like timings? Um, what do you mean? If you won't win, don't relax. Up against Protoss. I said we would add in some Widow Mine drops. And while I don't necessarily recommend it, it is one of those builds that is very good. Though, you do run the risk of just dying if you're not focusing on having enough at home. So, I will be doing a Widowmine drop, but with an additional focus, I'm making sure I don't just die if he decides to counterattack with half a dozen units. Alone versus no one? Well, you can just play the game versus no one. It'll show victory at the start. You just return to game and play it out. Or add one of several hundred extension mods, from instant build and train, to build order trainers, to specific AI, to one of the dozens of AI builds of varying difficulties. There are several options that we have gone over, especially at the beginning uh, of this episode. As well. Hello, Probe. Instead of attacking the probe, though, I'm going to go across. We're at 70. We got 10 more actions to um, to play with. So whatever are we going to do, what we're going to do is mind drop. Essentially, those 10 extra actions are going to be things like adding a mind drop in, maybe uh, doing a little more uh, advanced production. Because, yes, there's a lot of APM in just setting up your base. I've, I've very much minimized... I'm essentially giving you the Cliff Notes version of what is still a high-level build, but it is the very much uh, stock version, I guess. That's what I've been trying to do. So he's he's kind of trying to wall off against the Reaper. We won't tell him that he did fail that. All I need I've seen all I need to see. I know all I need to know. There's that factory, 23 supply. Though if the reactor is done, it would be 25. Get my gas here. His probes don't seem to like me. But they do want to lick me, which I guess that could be interpreted in several different ways. I'm just going to have this SCV ready to potentially scout. I'm going to queue up. Let me make sure I put it in the right spot. That very center spot on the... Uh... Yeah, there you go. You got the grid to each of those sides. I rarely actually look at the grid. I really should. I just try to eyeball it and ignore the grid that's right in front of my face. We're going to start a Whittle Mine. We're going to keep producing Marines. This is very The most important part of this is to consistently be producing Marines. Because that is my army of the future. My first Whittle Mine, I'm going to actually put right here. So if he builds an Oracle or something, you've seen this before. Flies right in. Let me get 
engineering bay, and... There you go. We're gonna get a medevac. I'm gonna drop supply, because I already screwed it up. And as I'm building my medevac, as I'm building my medevac, I'm getting two more barracks right around that 30 to 35 mark it is a consistent thing i'm actually just going to get the turrets and the mineral lines i'm going to unburrow this we don't mind i'm going to put a tech lab here drop mules i'm going to control two and boost the medevac out and send it on a shift click to his base. Finally, is complete. Start a tank. We're just gonna get a reactor on the starport, though I'm probably not gonna use it. I debated getting a Viking, though I don't think we're gonna focus on that. Getting some supply depots on the edge, and then two tech labs on these barracks. Control F1. So before I send the drop in, I want to make sure I'm building as much as possible. So I see down here, I'm actually going to have this SCV patrolling this corner. We're going to start plus one. A lot of the time, the most important part of a Widowmine drop is not how... Obviously, you want it quick, but like, it's not so much about being the quickest as about being executed cleanly. So very important, we're going to use that dropping. In order to drop while moving, I'm going to de-click on the medevac while it's moving. So that's the hard part here. All right, I'm gonna boost the medevac through here. And then we're gonna just box select. I'm building units during all this. I'm just right clicking on those and now well, I'm going to get two medevacs, and then I'm going to start building Vikings, because he has Colossi, and that's very important to note. I'm going to get drop some more supply, because I said, like, we need to focus on not getting, like, like, building up at home. And then I get supply blocked. So, of course, right? Because even if you do economic damage, if you're not building up units at home, he's still, like, he's still money. He still has an army. You've been thinking about this for so long while he's still been building his units, especially if he, he got a tech. So. Gonna get concussive shells. Couple Vikings here. Gonna boost that medevac in. And now I'm leaving. I'm not going to worry about this anymore. He's taking another base. We're going to get barracks four and five. Get the armor upgrade. Get an armory. And now a second engineering bay. I didn't get two engineering bays because this build you do need some extra minerals when you're going for the mine drop. But we're now getting the armory and the second engineering bay. And to be honest, he has a pretty quick third. Do I have my upgrades? It's a hard decision, but he already has the third. So I want to try to pressure that. He's got it way quicker than I do. So I'm moving out. I'm going to get some more depots. I'm going to land my third. I'm going to make sure we're building tanks. And I'm queuing up Vikings, which are the most important units. Those are the units people don't build when a big attack is going on. Because they're the hardest to tab through, let's be honest here. I'm going to get that third. Drop some mules. 
gonna get the ship weapons upgrade. Control F1. And I didn't see his army, so that was not good. We're gonna lift this. Well, I didn't check where his army was, which is bad news. But we can scan the recall, which means I need to run away and try to join up with the rest of my army. He has an observer. We're gonna get those Vikings up here. Using that high ground area. So, when you can use a high ground, that's the best time for the Vikings to fight. Because the Colossi will suffer from the same issue. Because they're too tall. And you can hit them in the head. And that's why you build Vikings against Colossi. Which has always been a quite an interesting counter, but uh, I waited until I joined up with my army and all those vikings I've been building. Now the vikings, remember, also can do extra damage on the ground against most of the stuff he's building. Let's see, does he have this base? Or this one? Or this one? Okay, all right, all right. So he's on two bases. Control click, deal with this. No reason. I'm actually gonna build this into a planetary. I usually would have it as an orbital, but at this point, I think the top priority is, is not dying. Time to show new skills. Usually an orbital is actually more defensible because you're not tied to it. You can lift it like I just did. If it had been a planetary to start, I probably would have just lost. Well, I did lose it, didn't I? But lifting it gave it a better chance to live. And we're going to get a sensor tower. Going to put a couple marauders in there. Command center upgrade completed successfully. Spotter. I guess turrets because I have plenty of depots. When did that happen? All right. So select all army, control one. And then I'm going to use select army, control click the Vikings, alt three. And that removes them from the main control group. Is this tank stuck? How are you stuck? Oh my God. It removes them from the main control group. Oh yeah, a very important thing I didn't actually do was build those turrets in the main. Because the big risk here is that uh, the big risk is a warp prism. I'm getting a fusion core. I wish it was for battle cruisers, but potentially liberator range. Uh, as well as another starport for similar things. So he's got stalkers. He's got a Colossus. Wonder where he learned that one. But well upgraded uh, Marine Marauder Medevac with Vikings in a good spot. That's the uh, that's the play for him. Just in case I want to not have the perfect in case I want the perfect video, I should tell you guys. The counter would be adding an Archons would be very good. Archons and charged lots would help a lot uh, because they, n the Vikings don't really help either of them and they buffer. Of course, Storm also good uh, if you can swing it. Since I don't have any ghosts, as a matter of principle, I'm going to build that Ghost Academy. building armor. I'm going to send a marine shift clicking a marine to each of those locations. 
So it deselects it. I'm gonna get Liberator Range. Mineral fuel exhausted. Time to make it and Time now to with complete. plus three attack you finishing. Attack. Time to fight. The enemy attacked our forces. Wanna make sure we scan. Stim. A click the Vikings. Units will, if you have enough space, the units will naturally spread out around and give you a pretty nice concave. And that's what we're using there. No, we overdid it. I got the hot pickup um, achievement, which I assume is for the Widowmine drop. Let's, you can actually check. Load a dropship with a unit that is under attack. Wow, we've gone this far without loading up any units that were under attack. Good. But now I have your we did attention. go over. Winter Gaming is now chilling. That's not what we're looking for. <laughs> he did take a third in a timely manner. He built Colossi and Stalkers, which will get you far. Because most Terrans will not focus on upgrades and Vikings. They'll do one or the other, but rarely will you find both. Obviously, like even there, though, you saw I got caught off guard. I was surprised by the counterattack, even though I probably shouldn't have been. I should have had, I think, standard practice. Even even pros are using censored. It used to be like a badge of shame to build a censor tower. Like, it used to be, oh my god, you can't micro your scouting well enough. You need a censor tower. What a noob. But nowadays, pros are, are, are realizing, I mean, obviously in TVT, but in general, like, maybe having several extra seconds of warning when you're getting attacked and not having to just scan random locations or send half a dozen marines to their death every few seconds. Um, maybe that's better. So, we're, we're seeing... I, I, it's not like now there's 10 sensor towers all over the place, but there's definitely more, um, which is interesting. Yeah, the, the TVT's always been a sensor tower fest because TVT's always been just a, a trench warfare, even if the trenches are in the skies and they're fighting with mass Viking Raven, but like... <laughs> but I think we can definitely cut down. Like, the Widowmine drop, I, I definitely got fancy with the micro, right? Um, just one. Honestly, what we're gonna do, we're gonna give up the Widow Mine drop after one. Just the one. So, what are we seeing here? His, his cyber core is late, and he has an expansion. You know what that means? He's very unlikely to have units to threaten me, or much tech. So I am perfectly good to just get in, drop the mines, and then build up an army behind. Get that second gas, which is not necessary for the Widow Mine drop, but if you do want to go for any more tech behind, like if you want to follow up with tanks, or maybe a raven, if you happen to scout a dark shrine, I think some of you are familiar with dark shrines. I'm going to have that SCV just... Billy Bob, go back out there. He doesn't want to taste the minerals. He's he's tasted adventure. He's seen outside these walls. He's never 
coming back to just sit there and mine minerals for the rest of his existence. No! He'll die out there. We'll make sure of it. So you don't need a third supply depot if you do the build right. Why? Because command centers are worth 15 supply, and the command center should finish by the time you get supply blocked at 31. Uh, something to keep in mind. That doesn't mean it's necessarily a mistake to build a third one, but it slows down most of the rest. I'm going to build a third depot now, but I was prioritizing getting, say, the widow mines out. Come on, center, move it to an over level. I'm going to send out a couple marines. These are partially just to see if I'm getting attacked and partially to see if I'll be able to uh, send the medevac on that path without it being spotted. I mean, he might rush an observer or something, but um, I'm not too worried if it gets spotted, but who knows. We're going to get Supply depots. Put them in the medevac. This time, I'm gonna get a viking. We're gonna get two more barracks here as well. Adonis ready. Make sure those are hotkeyed in. Queue up enough SCVs. Start a tank. That medevac spotted a pylon. So pretty much I'm making sure everything is going smoothly at home. I'm not going to get supply blocked this time. I'm going to patrol the Viking. All right. And we're going to use the oldest trick in the book. Well, actually, he's doing it. So, D-click, E, 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 and then I'm sending the medevac home. Tech labs, that it, our work here is done. I don't care how many more, how much more damage we do, we've done it. Alright, if a widow mine drop even lands and keeps him busy, it's worth it. Finally, a is complete. Stim, combat shield, marauders, an observer died, medevacs coming home, it's going to join up with the two more medevacs I'm building. Started that third command center going to send out a marine to go scout. I'm pretty sure he was taking that other third base, but I'm not 100%. Drop this. You stop getting in the way. Going to get barracks 4 and 5. I bet we're around 50 SCVs. 51! Going to queue up Concussive shells. He doesn't have a third base. Hmm. I do. Okay. So, here's what we're gonna do. Advanced tactic. And by advanced, I mean very basic. But, what I, I need you to justify your drops to me. Like, why are we doing drops? What's the purpose? Not for the sake of it. Here's what we're doing. He has an observer right there. I mean, even better. I'm going to send this medevac out to the corner. Look at him go. If you can't, if you zoom in and out, you can see the observer even better. So this drop should scare him. Until I see him on my side of the map, that medevac goes and stays in the corner. We're taking a third now. I'm getting some missile turrets to deal with potentially warp prisms. Taking the third itself. We're going to scan, because I don't know what army I'm dealing with. Colossi. Who would have thought? So we got tanks, marines. 
We're going to scan out here as well. Because can't, can't have him watching. It's private. Finally, Adon is complete. All right. Move a few SCVs down. Get a sensor tower. Get a bunker. Some depots. Some chew toys, really, is what we're doing. Shift click off a marine or two. Our troops clash with enemies. Show our force. Colossi especially are vulnerable to being distracted by uh, things like depots. Because they have such long range. Uh, they have trouble focusing on, on specific parts. I'm actually going to send Billy Bob out here. Who knows? Maybe there's a... I got to check all those bases. It's a little suspicious he hasn't even tried for a third. Control 3 on the Vikings. No more minerals control, shift 1. Control, shift 1. Shift 1. But if he doesn't have a third, and I do, like, there's no reason for me to attack past uh, until I get the 200 supply, pretty much. There's no reason really to risk it. There are exceptions. All right. So, medevac, come on in. Oh, he kept these at home. We're going to scan. There's his main army. Make sure we got those Vikings. Make sure we're producing. The enemy attacked our forces. He cleaned it up, which means this army should be moving now. I could probably fight it, but if he wants to attack into me, I will let him do so. Because remember, time is on my side. Get another sensor tower. Some more turrets. We'll get a Ghost Academy now, just in case we want to add it in. You can now see his army with that second sensor tower. we we'll get a third command center behind it. Looks like he's moving here a little. I'm going to keep most of the tanks unseaged because he can move around. I don't want to have to unseage and resiege them. Bring those Vikings in. Stim the Marines and Marauders. I'm not sure where the war prism... Oh, there it is. Without Colossi, though, this army, not very good. It should have happened. Our troops clashed with enemies. Show our force. You have exhausted all the Building Vikings and Medivacs. Well, actually, I don't really need more Medivacs. Gonna use Select All Army. Everything scattered. Control 1. Unseage the tanks. He does not have a third, but I did just win a fight, so it would be uh, irresponsible not to try to do some damage now. Like, when you kill all the splash damage and you still have most of your army, that's when it's time to give it a shot. Oh no, the adventuring of he never gave his life. No! Ugh. I will be honest. A lot of that is the Widow Mind drop. And just drops in general. And again, we failed again. That guy is like, you know, you keep failing, therefore this is useless. Um, I'm paraphrasing slightly. Uh, but yeah. 
we definitely could just get by without a Widowmine drone. We could ignore drops entirely. We could sit in our base till 200 supply. Could do that with probably a dozen less APM. But we're now starting to add in. Like, honestly, he did all right. We're starting to see... These are some macro protoss, and by that I mean they, they got their build order guide. I wonder which one. Uh, the Colossi and the Stalkers. They haven't watched the second episode of the Protoss yet, uh, where we start Charge Lat, um, Immortal Archon. Um, but that is a key part, getting through gold. If I was dealing with the CIA build, uh, I would very likely be a little more focused on liberators or even adding in ghosts do you rally at home when you push out or with the army almost never with the army i think too much can go wrong if your army isn't good enough to stand on its own for the most part like at this level rallying is more likely to go wrong than go right good now i have your attention when How come you're not using outside. ghosts? Because my opponents are building Robo Bay units. If my opponents were building Archons, or Charge Lots, or uh, Immortals, like I just described, uh, then I would probably go for ghosts as opposed to Mass Viking. Uh, ghosts or Liberators. But Vikings are the direct and easy to use counter to Stalker Colossus. Um. Vikings are, in general, quite a good, efficient unit to use. They just take a little bit of finesse. That's why we're choosing one specialty unit, one advanced unit uh, per game, per matchup here. Now, that unit can change. Like, maybe it would have gone to Viking from Vikings to Liberators. I don't think you need to have Bio and Ghosts and Tanks and Liberators and Widow Mines... Like, I don't think you need to be, and Vikings, I don't think you need to be controlling all of that. But those extra units, those advanced units for Terran, are where a lot of the uh, later game potential comes from. It's not from building a bunch more Marines, though it could be, big kid, but... Donation uh, thank you. Aloha just donated $22.22. Aloha. Just wanted to thank you for the streams. Your streams have helped me through some rough times, and I really appreciate it. And then I switched to Protoss, or am I cheapening it? I'm sorry. Thank you. Glad you enjoy. The idea is kind of bringing us on par with the Zerg and the Protoss. I will, I'll tell you right now, the late game Terran army, that Maru and, mostly Maru and Hero Marines seem to make look so easy is incredibly hard to use. It's it's filled with units that die to splash damage nearly instantaneously. But you don't have to have that entire army. Like, um, you don't have to get every single unit and control it perfectly, but you do have to make decisions on which units you're going to build. So I'm picking one of those units. And focusing on it because even one of those units is going to help tremendously and disproportionately apparently the specialty unit i've done this game is a reaper because i was too busy listening to that heartfelt message and then making a sarcastic comment to remember that we're not building reapers so um here we are yes you can go reaper first here's what i'm gonna do we're gonna look at his base. Oh, what do you got? That that was a roach one. You know that's good because I didn't actually realize that was a roach one when I first looked at it. I just assumed that was a spawning pool. So you know what? This reaper, maybe it was just a fortuitous thing. I just kind of assumed it was a hatch first. So here we are. I now build a bunker. The Reaper of Fortuitousness. Remember, the Reaper is a cameraman. You pretend it doesn't have any weapon. It's building a lair. It's a cameraman. Just wants to see what's going on. What are you up to? 
Are you hiding, Spire? Come on, Santa no, totally Grace. not. Time to kill enemies. It's just a special roach operation, all right? It's not a nidus. We would never invade your base. It's roaches. I think it's a nidus. But it could also be mutas. Um, either way. I'm going to get a tank. That lair layers don't take long to finish. Engineering bay to help wall as well. I'm gonna get towards a banshee as well. So he has two gases and he's not actively attacking me with the roaches. So that there's something. I'm really uh, leaning on this Reaper now, but... Remember, building workers while I scout. And there's the Spire! Mutas! Hmm. So, even though I prefer to go mech, if they go very quick Spire, you just simply... It's not as good. Mech is not as good. It costs gas. Marines shoot up! Like, that's it. And then they also fire at Mutus. Oh, so what's not to love? Is that all? Yeah, he has a bunch of roaches, but I already have a tank. For the thing is, I'm going bio not just to counter Mutus. It's also perfectly fine against um, roaches. In fact, it's quite good. Oh, we can actually fit a command center in the corner there. How convenient. Another important point is when a spire is a third of the way done, they can't build mutas yet. I see a lot of players will be like, oh, a spire, and immediately six turrets. No, that spire has to finish, and then they have to build the mutas, and then they have to fly them across the map. So there's a process. Um, that does not happen instantly. So usually you can assume like, a spire takes a little over a minute to finish itself. So if you see a spire halfway done, you got probably about two minutes till mutas can be in your base. Which, it's been about two minutes now, so... Now, there's a chance, if he's the biggest brain of players, he just doesn't go mutas. He knows it's been scouted. It's been found out. He goes for the, the extra bam boozle. Uh, which is just building a bunch more roaches, so it's not really a complicated process. But here's the point. Doesn't really matter. And also it is mutes. But it doesn't really matter because I know we have a better economy. There's no way he has a better economy. He had so many less rounds. He's kind of fighting the turrets, slash the marines. Ooh. I may lose that turret, Finally. but I can build more. As he doesn't really seem to be respecting them very much. There was a man... Oh, yeah, yeah. So turrets have a little dude in them. Right up until you research high sec auto-tracking, and then their job gets automated. And he's gone. Never to feed his family again. Fun fact, once you get high sec auto-tracking, the man is actually removed and replaced by, like, there's, like, a little control panel <laughs> in there. So, maybe, maybe that's why you shouldn't research. Where's the man? He gets a little dizzy. Mineral fuels exhausted. Time to make the fun. <laughs> he just... He made... <laughs> Alright. I should have gotten two more barracks here. I'm gonna send out one marine. Oh, where's Billy Bob? Billy Bob the Scouting SCV and his brother Billy Bob the Second Junior Esquire. No more mineral with you. 
MD. Wait, what was that? Oh my god, did I just scan overlords? You see, they'll never know I'm not a gold leaguer. That was a... A very convincing gold league move. I will say, credit to me. Pretty sure 30 SCVs at a base is less than ideal. You'd be wrong. It's actually more than ideal. But I would not expect basic math out of Twitch chat. What are you guys doing? I must have right clicked on something. Oh my god, I clicked on the Carrick! Uh. That's why, because if it was one of my units, if it was one of my units, they would have eventually settled. Like, they settle around the unit. But since the critters are constantly moving. Um. It, it never, they never quite settle. Which is, because some of these maps have so many critters, this is why you'll see some pro players go out of their way to kill them. Especially in the main, with like the cleaning bots and stuff. They can block your base for not long, like a, a quarter second, but there have been games decided... Not many, but there have been games decided by players accidentally A-clicking on a critter or something. Is this Whittlemon stuck in my base? How? How are you walled? Explain. I explain. Explain. I explain. Is this turret walling it? just walk through. I... Upgrade complete. But elevate the... It was the perfect angle. Okay, so my specialty unit is Widow Mines, which I'm going to put on the 2 key. So that way I can control them independently. Um, those are brood lords. Uh-huh. On the bright side, the counter to Brood Lords is Marines. So... If he had actually, so that's why, yeah, infestors could actually be incredibly good there. But they have to not be on the select all army hotkey and run into the fight. Because they don't have those slime balls like the High Templar do. Why did the High Templar get the fancy auto attack? Your army is under attack. Time to fight. All right, so we're building. Back at home. We've got money in the bank here. Uh, we'll get. I've already got multiple starports. Starports are really the later game. Those are non speed zerglings. What upgrades do they have? Zero, zero. So that's not great. Definitely could be better. Literally couldn't be worse, actually. So. That's another thing from Zergs are the Panic Zerglings. You might not have put any upgrades into them, but sometimes you just gotta hold down that Z key. So, with the Zerg low APM challenge, that's one of the things we're definitely trying to uh, break the habit of. Is Panic Links. 
But the summary there is, it doesn't really matter what he's up to. I'm gonna sit back. Even if he has, like, we, we scouted the Mutas. Even if I hadn't scouted, well, if I hadn't scouted them at all and I had gone for mech, there's a chance I literally have no anti-air when they show up. That fortuitous Reaper, we can give a shout out to Aloha for distracting me enough to accidentally build a Reaper. Um, because that is the default higher level build. It, but we're still, we're going to be working Reapers in, probably higher into gold. But I still think it's not as relevant as just focusing on your build and focusing on what you're doing at home. SPM on uh, SC2 replay stats is screens per minute. That's how many times you look at different parts of the map. Um, it's uh, probably a better indicator of how fast you're playing compared to APM, though neither of them are perfect. Did a ton by seeing the Spire. The thing is, I didn't need to see the Spire to know. All I needed to do was see him sitting on two base to get a little suspicious. You know what? But, inspired by uh, Jeffrey, the Reaper, we will now be doing a Reaper opener. I know. From, again, Zerg. From now on. Jeffrey, the cameraman. Hmm. We are still going to SCV scout. Honestly, that, that kind of tells you what the Reaper should be looking for with the SCV scout. If you scout, he's not going for a hatchery first. Then the Reaper... There's only so much creep. Okay. One of the big weaknesses of Zerg is they can only build on creep. So, it is realistic if you have a good pathing to scout all of the creep. There's only so much creep to start. So you can see if there are any buildings you should worry about. And if you can't see, there will be units to stop you, and then you'll see those units. So either way, can't lose. So that actually seems a little late. It should be over halfway done. He does have a spawning pool. Okay. And he has gas, of which he's mined only like 20 you start at 2250 for reference. So, that means no Zergling speed. That means he can't have anything but slow Zerglings right now. And that means this Reaper can just go straight across. I'm building a Marine. This SCV is going to build a bunker because we're still acknowledging. Wait, is that the right? Yeah, there you go. I'm going to get a reactor. And now we're scouting the creep here. Do a quick tour of the base if you don't mind, sir. Do you have a roach warren? No? Okay. Talk to you later. I'll be back. I'll be back. But we're going to wait until I get my build up and running. We were, looking forward to this we're not going for Hellions. Hellions are definitely a platinum thing. Uh, Hellion Micro is a lot more complicated than it seems. And it's actually very hard to get the benefit of Hellions without distract Until you have a solid build to build off of. The standard, like, high-level Hellion Reaper opener, I think, is Finally, out of reach. Like, I don't... I actually strongly feel that your average gold player should not be going for the Hellion opener, because it is much more likely to do harm than good. 
It's definitely something to add in once you're comfortable with the rest of the build. We're going to start with a Banshee. Remember, the interest is to go mech. It's just unclear whether we're going to be able to. Reaper coming in for another quick tour. Zergling speed, you can see with the with the spawning pool freaking out there. Gonna get the engineering bay. Ah. So there's very likely a roach one next to that. Either way, here's what we're gonna do. If he has two Evo chambers and a spine, you know what he's not gonna do? Attack me. At least not for a bit. So I'm going to get a third command center. The engineering bay is mostly in case of like a spire rush. And so I don't forget it. And he's got that was a zergling. A lesser type of zerg. Gonna get all this gas. Two more factories. He, and a very important point was he didn't have a lair. He had not even started one. So, without the lair, I feel a lot more comfortable getting my factories up and going for mech. Because even if he goes for a timing, that timing is uh, roaches. It's maybe, maybe it's zerglings and banelings, but there's only so many options. Move this over here. All right. Let's scout with the one banshee. A scout she. I'm going to move the barracks. That's my overlord now. Going to use all these tech labs. Going to get double armory here. Going to get a couple vikings. I like just having a couple vikings. Let's take a look. Actually, maybe we can see something with the Banshee. Remember, workers while scouting. Scouts and cheese. Hydralis Den. Banelings. And not very many drones at the third. Hydraling Bane. Alright. I'm gonna go take the third. Even though I didn't see a spire, I'm building just one turret in the mineral line. You can't take the risk when going for mech. You can't take the risk that there happen to be mutas. Because you don't have any built-in anti-air. Uh, you don't just make marines as a matter of course. I'm going to be... Uh, I've got a couple Thors now queued up. We're going to get these gases here. Actually, that's going to block annoyingly. No more minerals in the field. Drop down supply depots. I have one tank on the high ground. Let's start those upgrades as well. I got the armories after three factories. But I'm focusing on making sure I have unit production first. Before I worry too much about anything else. Because just not having enough units is how mech usually dies here. Once I have a couple Thors, I'm gonna... Brenda! Uh... Alright. Well, she, uh, suicide by siege tank. Okay, then. Um... That was... traumatizing. Get all this gas. Some more tech. Well, I'm gonna scan. And. Okay. I'm such a gold league Terran. But. it When you're going mech, you really don't hurt for minerals nearly as much as bio. What you hurt for is knowing whether you need to tech switch. And by that, I mean you need to focus more on things like um, Thors, 
or on things. We're gonna get one reactor, four tech labs, one reactor, I think is a usually pretty solid uh, composition. But yeah, with mech, a lot of the times, I'm getting blue flame, you find yourself hurting for gas. Um, and getting caught off guard by like, for example, if I think he's going to mute us, I build a bunch of Thors and it's just Ling Bane. Thors aren't that great against it. Or Lurkers as well is something that they struggle with. Finally, Adon is complete. Going to get a few more supply depots. We see a lot on the sensor tower, but I'm pretty sure most of that is Zerg links. Just go take that. I'm gonna move some of the army over there. Let's get those upgrades filled in. One or two tanks at each base, but you don't want too many tanks taken away from your main army. Your army is under attack. Time to fight. Okay. All right. Well, that was an interesting choice. Take a seat. This church is ready. Time to show our strength. Ready and a few liberators is never bad. That will be our specialty unit mostly here. Though Mech has a lot of, uh, you can kind of just a move, but there are a lot of units that benefit from a little bit of micro. Whether it be the positioning of the Thors, or whether or not you have Hellions or Hellbats. Usually Hellbats are better just to die first. But uh, if you actually want to micro back and forth, or you plan on keeping... Did I just trap the Thor with two... How am I so good at this? Anyways, we're going to add some more starports because the actual end game is battle cruisers. Take some of these tanks. More command centers. Now I have your more sensor towers. Thank you. This chilling for 17 months. Thank you for showing these low APM challenges. I do enjoy. That's a lot of banelings. He may get the base. Nope. He a clicked the Thor. Okay, my turn. Put the Thors in high impact mode. We're going to siege up the tanks. Liberators. Few more units. Thanks to your educational efforts, I can apprehend how bad a Bane, Bane Rush that was. And after apprehending it, what are you going to do with it? Do you have legal grounds with which to hold that Bane Rush? Or is it more of a we'll find something situation? You never know with Bane Lings, right? You know they're up to no good. They're bane lines, but... Oh yeah, we were gonna go battle cruisers. I did get a little distracted from that. He did hold. But we can build another army. Planetary. Where is that fusion core? Got yeah, Metavax. Very fancy. Let's 
siege tanks, liberators, doors, plenty of upgrades. Oh, hello, Medivax. Welcome to the party. Upgrade complete. Battle awaits us. Move the tanks a little forward. And a lot of players will, will see the tanks and immediately jump. It feels like the time. But if you have enough set up, it's, it's not much of an issue to defend. Start those ship weapons. Do I have building armor? I do, actually. And, yeah, at this stage, all you have to do is not right-click your units into a bunch of lurkers. The big danger is lurkers, but I, I do have detection. GG! The real struggle with mech is that third base. That is when you'll get tripped up. The third base, if you take too long to take it, then you're it's, you're not going to get the benefit. And you're not going to be able to keep up with the Zerg. Take it too early and you're not going to have enough units. So usually the third base, after you get a Banshee and a few tanks, which is after your third uh, second and third factories anyways because remember we're not taking we're not building the third CC till after additional production so you can't be scared to take it especially if you realize your opponent is not going to be able to attack relatively early like he built double evo chamber he didn't have a lair that means no aggression for a time so a hero unit was a bane that killed a bane hey banes always get at least one kill GG, Scoochie Moo. Uh, actually, like, I, I don't mind people sniping if they're at the level. And, like, that was a, a pretty good example of of your, your typical gold zerg. Scoochie, let's focus on taking a third more than defending attacks that aren't there. Don't worry, I'll be doing zerg soon. Well, there we are. Technically made it. Um. Oh yeah, Rex. Oh no, 133. I built an SA. Oh no. Ugh. All right. Well. It is time to celebrate our entry into the Middle Leagues. One Solar Flare. One Solar Flare build. We've kind of avoided it partially because I'm trying not to have every episode take four hours, but... Um... We will see. Still finding people. 2 a.m. No, Rex! Oh, Rex. But I will also take more general questions as well. 
I think we covered a lot of important stuff today. Um, and I think this was actually the best one yet for learning Terran. Obviously, the baseline is important, like having that basic build and why. But today we actually talked about why you build certain units, where to put them, a little bit of like, like I think we accomplished what I set out to accomplish, which was basic micro, advanced units, and then bio versus uh, mech. So we did a little bit of basic micro, Whittle Mine Drops, controlling Vikings and bio, advanced units like Liberators and those Whittle Mines, and just uh, Vikings in general. We haven't really added in Ghosts is the one thing we're missing. And on the upper half of gold into platinum, I'm going to start sprinkling those in. Um, though, to make it clear, I think not until closer to diamond against zerg or ghost needed almost never against terran really essentially never uh and also but they're almost always good against protoss the question is how good uh, uh can you make them more worth it than say a couple liberators ghosts are the best unit in the game but they're also one of the hardest to get value out of efficiently because they overwrite, uh, they make it harder to use most of the rest of your army is, is part of why. So we have a Protoss. This will be the last game of episode three of the Terran Low APM Challenge. I'm really happy with how it's going. Um, I'm excited to see how many people are interested, especially in the, the Terran version. Um... Yeah, in fact, let's see. Let me, let me make sure I get my barracks in time. But Jimmy, where's my memes? Where are my memes? I'm, I'm looking through my very important memes here. I have so many memes, it's sometimes hard. Because believe it or not, we don't have a great labeling system. Um, in fact, sometimes I question where these titles come from. Um... We see we're doing a true gold league build this time. Well. This is completely unrelated. But don't worry. Come it on, still sir. applies. Okay, Anyone been there? Just kind of unrelated. We're gonna try... No scouting. So, when the Protoss eventually attacks me, I'm gonna complain about imbalance. And then move on. That's... That's usually a good build, I think, as a Terran player. Just following the professional build order. Yeah, the meme, it's not a good meme, actually. It's a pretty poor meme. It's not very well explained. Usually our memes are, are pretty solid. Like, you can understand them. Otherwise, it's just not a good meme. Uh, it's simply mediocre. You gotta be able to get it. Well, hopefully. Some of better.
I haven't seen anything because because I haven't looked. But we're gonna assume he's rushing DTs. All Protoss are rushing DTs unless proven otherwise. No, that's not a good assumption. Don't do that. Don't just assume that. Okay, that's not. Don't do that. Um. Because the counter to DTs is not countering DTs. It's just having a solid army with minimal detection. That's that's the actual counter. Um, like, you're not specifically countering the DTs. You're countering the uh, not having an army part. A lot of people will see the tech and say, I need to deal with that specifically. And that is another of the big pitfalls of thinking... This game's about counter. This isn't like Age of Empires where the developers are like, we don't like how when an archer gets stabbed in the face with a spearman, that archer actually has a chance of dying because archers are supposed to counter spearmen. So we gave the archer a fuck ton of extra damage against spearmen. It's like, well, if, if that spearman gets up there and stabs him in the face, don't you think he should have a shot? So that's not how this game works. Um, there's very little specific extra damage. Like, the, some of the only specific extra damage that units get are things like the, the Spore Crawler. Um, which only does extra damage to biological. Uh, and since it only hits air, it only hits air biological. So that means Zerg unit. So the Spore Crawler only has extra damage. It's like plus shield damage. Uh, as well, which Widow Mines have. Uh, and so do Disruptors, fun fact. Disruptors and Widow Mines, both extra good at killing those pesky Protoss units. Um, it's, it's essentially so they one-shot Stalkers and other Disruptors that they have that. It has the side effect of also making them very good against, like, Archons. Immortals do, like, triple damage versus armored? Yes, but that's not... Like, they do okay damage on their own. And also, every race has a lot of armored units. That applies to a dozen or more units, actually. Like, I'm saying, for example, that example I was making was not an exaggeration. They're literally, like, archers do plus 10 to spearmen. Literally, specifically... And only Spearman. <laughs> like, <laughs> this, fuck this unit in particular. Uh, is essentially it. So there isn't really anything like that in, in SE2. That is, I think, a common misconception for, with people coming from other games. Like, there are units that counter other units, but rarely are they explicitly designed as, like, this is the counter. Ravager versus Force Field? Well, I mean, like... But... Ravagers are used the most against Zerg, though. <laughs> they are only rarely used against Protoss. Like... That is a specific scenario with, with screwing over that, that interaction. I guess. But... It's not like... It, it's tacked on as opposed to... You know what? I guess that's an okay example. We're assuming my opponent is an AFK. He also typed GLHF. I have not scouted, and I have not seen any scouts. So... We're just really embracing the gold league here. It's either gonna be like a one base cannon rush, all half all in, into void rays, or no rush 20 minutes. Yeah, part of the downside, and and this is we're back to the meta discussion. But part of the downside of SC two is not so much that you have these soft counters. the The downside is that 
Um, everything just does so much damage and is so good at killing each other. That's a problem with, like, the statistics. Like, literally, the number, the points of damage each unit does. And it does it so well because the pathfinding... It's the best pathfinding of any RTS game. Like, the units are so good at getting in range and murdering the fuck out of each other. That is actually a problem. Like, uh... <laughs> to an extent, that is, that is the issue with the game, is it? I don't think it was very much originally designed around having armies, because in Brood War, it is technologically limited. Like, you can only select 12 units at a time. Zerglings trip over each other just to get in range. Like, uh, Reavers sometimes just didn't attack because they're too dumb. Like, <laughs> um, like the technological issues were, were what kept brood war from being that sort of death volley situation sc2 is still such a technological leap forward a tactical jump past generations of rts that uh i don't think the original designers really respected how good their game was this is like the most backhanded compliment like you were not good enough at this game to understand how everybody would just build death balls. Like, <laughs> and then we got like the Infestor Broodlord. Uh, we had like Colossus Void Ray. It's actually the least death ball today it's ever been, with the, I guess, the somewhat notable exception of Protoss versus Zerg. Um, but it's still, especially in the lower leagues. You got a lot of just, I looked away and then my army died because I was busy lining up my pylons very nice in my main. Um, which, obviously you shouldn't be able to uh, redecorate your entire main for a minute and a half and expect to not die. But at the same time, I d I'm not a fan of like, widow mines and tanks and disruptors and and banelings and lurk or, like there's so much that there's so much alpha damage so much damage that hits your army with like an unrealistic amount of time to react yes at this level we don't have to care building more shit is the real counter but it is i think around that diamond level when players are good enough to build enough units, it does come down to if someone does look away for a few extra seconds. That's when um, it becomes an issue. Like, that's when the fact that literally for somewhere between three and 300 minutes at any time, it could be three minutes, it could be 300 minutes. You don't know how long this game is going to be when you queue up. Probably closer to three, but not necessarily that close. Somewhere in the next three to three hundred minutes, you could look away for four seconds and lose and fucking lose. And, uh, I mean, that's how it feels. That's not always true, obviously. But I think a lot of people feel that way. And part of this series is trying to dispel that rumor. Most of the time, especially in the lower levels, it is not remotely true. You could sit here and talk about the meta discussion of StarCraft 2 and whether the designers knew what the fuck they were doing when they gave, like, every unit intense splash damage and had them all have overkill protection. Like, for example, the siege tanks have more IQ than half the players because they won't all shoot at one Zergling. They'll actually spread their damage uh out across all the Zerglings and they won't all aim at the first one like it's Brood War. Like, that's another thing. So, uh, like, literally, the units are so smart. Too smart for their own good. It, it, it actually makes it so much easier to murder so much stuff with very little effort. What was the Protoss doing? Psh. Chilling. Oh. Follower. The game plays for you. It doesn't play for you. Velden is chilling for 16 months. 
it it is just very responsive like play any other rts game any there is no comparison especially modern ones okay i'm talking about aoe4 which is such a like if aoe4 came out in 2007 i'd still be like we'd be like well sc2 is a leap forward but it didn't come out in 2007 it came out in 2021 and it is not a step forward it is several steps back and once again, like, I think a lot of people conflate design with the actual mechanics. Um, and that is my continued mission, is to explain the difference. The SC2 engine is a technological marvel which may never be repeated, ever. No matter how much you're looking forward to Frost Giant or Mortal Gates of Pyre, there may never be the... Uh, because it's 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 oh, it, the engine was designed for SC2. It's the SC2 engine. Right? It probably has a different name. Everything else is using other tools to work in certain ways. We're very powerful tools, but this was designed for this. Any complaints I think people have are with not so much the uh, actual mechanics of the game, but of the design and how quickly the units kill each other and all the numbers on it and all that. That's the that's the complaint. Anyways, it appears our complaint time for complaints have ended. Sir. I didn't do it correctly. We gotta activate the final tactic. How did you scan everything? Rapid fire scans. It's on the C key. Like a Ravager Corrosive Bile. Until you run out of energy. Wait. Prepare the volley!
So, for those who might have thought that a little bit of micro would have ruined the APM, I don't think you understand how much of the APM. That was a good learning experience, but how much of it is truly macro? When you're sitting there, praying he doesn't attack and building battle cruisers, as opposed to constantly pumping out bio units, which are one supply instead of six. I would ar I would say that probably two thirds to three quarters of the 70 APM budget, probably 40 to 50 at least, is building uh, CVs, building units, for constructing buildings, and supply depots, which count as buildings, I guess. The other 20 is micro. So, at the end of the day, that is uh, where it leaves us. Yes, some may take away, so I can just build battle cruisers. Yes, you can, to an extent. But for every Protoss that sits back for 12 minutes, there's a Protoss who has DTs in your base while you're trying to figure out how to construct your depots in a straight line. So there is that. But we'll take a few questions. We already went over those YouTube questions, but uh, uh, we did cover most of and all of what I, I wanted to cover with the Gold League. Obviously, we still got some Gold League to go, but we'll be adding in even more advanced units as well. Uh, we'll open it up to all the races. Why so bully? Um, I don't speak Zoomer. Uh, I try, though. Will Winter Gaming ever play Dyson Sphere Program again? Yes, and not really what I had in mind by questions. Starcraft like checkers scares me. Did you ever have to deal with ladder anxiety? You can use the anxiety command or search Starcraft 2 ladder anxiety on YouTube for my uh, commentary on that. But the short answer is not really. Um, I actually have more ladder anxiety today than ever because I've been better than I am now. So I guess I can empathize with most of you. Uh, in that, at some point, I was better. I put more time in. And now, it feels like an insurmountable goal. And every time I take a step forward, I might end up taking two steps back. But I'll tell you, StarCraft is, is kind of like um, any, any skill you learn, like a language or something you learn over time. It's not like a, a turn-based game where you learn the best strategy and you do the optimal thing every single turn or something. Whenever I get back into it, aka I go from like playing 10 games a week to like 50, it's a week or two. Like, uh, it's a week or two until you can actually see the results. Um, you, you don't even really notice it. Like, for example, uh, I was about 4,500 MMR at the start of the season, um, about a month ago, as random uh, on the account I was playing. Now I'm about 4,800 something. Oh, I intentionally, and, uh, I well, attention. I was playing a lot more because I want to do this series. And, and I felt like if I was months. dangerously close it to Diamond League myself, it would be a little trail. hard to convince people and reliably win those games. So, um, but I don't feel like I'm playing really very much faster. But once you get especially up to the Diamond and Master level, it's it's less about learning new things and more about for not forgetting the old ones. Uh, because StarCraft hasn't changed significantly much, especially in the last couple of years. But you don't realize how much you're missing. And you may never, but you will get better the more you play. Did you say the replays are available somewhere? Well, all of them are available on the Twitch chat. Maybe this will be the time we remember to put the uh, SC2 replay stats account um, in, in the comment or the description uh, where you can go through all the replays. On a scale of 1 to 10, how stupid and smart would it be to make Snipe autocast? Snipe autocast? I mean, most of the pros use it on rapid fire, and also me, so. 
Where can I see that image of requirements for each rank? What do you mean? Is this the requirements? So, um, uh, in the description is the APM chart. This is also uh, on the tweeters and YouTube community posts or whatever that nobody really looks at. So, um, but we have one for each, and it doesn't end. For you clever, clever devils out there, it doesn't end at platinum. It's just, by the time you get to diamond, you're just doing all these things and you're improving on it. By the time you get to diamond, you should have all the basic skills to be diamond, which are these. And now you do it better. There you go. Can you make a build counter chart and timings? I probably could. How to deal with lurkers as Terran. Uh, it is difficult. Tanks, liberators, ghosts are potentially helpful. But I think generally being active, like you need to not be sieging up your tanks when the army's on top of you. Which means never walking out onto creep without them. Um, bring up the previous screen. I mean, it's posted. You can just, okay, well. Sure. Just take out your phone. All right, get your phone out. You guys have phones. Okay. I don't... <laughs> but liberators and tanks are your most reliable method. And never walking on to creep blind. Just always being... Uh, knowing where that army is. There you go. There's it. You can just clip it. All right. There's your, there's your zerg. These are general ideas. They're not, like, hard and fast rules, obviously. Dun, 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 dun. And then, of course, here's the summary. Um, so, we got it all covered. But generally, yeah, um, with SC2 replay stats, you can use that training center a couple times a day. And if you're averaging more than two games a day, you're already doing better than most. Uh, and for free, and then you can do the $5 uh, SC2 replay stats elite, which goes to running the site, which handles millions of replays and is what gives us the data for all this as well. So... Um, that can give you the base, especially for, like, silver through diamond. Um, the training center has a ton of useful data to draw from. And you can literally see, like... Okay, I'll just do it. Like, it's not that hard. It's not that complicated. I'll just show you. Like... <laughs> How about I just show you? I know, right? Crazy, crazy concept. Anyways, this is the one thing I want to leave you with if you're actually looking to improve. So, say, I don't know, we'll go uh, a couple games back uh, against um, the game against uh, Scoochamoo. That's a pretty good macro game with mech. We can see. Well, here are the basic details. I can see that he was supply blocked a ton. I was not supply blocked as much, but I didn't actually go to the training center. Let's go to the training center. Where we can see, oh, my league goal is diamond because we are platinum with Protoss. We're gonna do, can we change the goal? There's a way to change the goal, but for now, diamond will be the goal. It takes the league above your highest league. Uh, usually. Let's take a look. Compared to uh, diamond players. Make sure you're building your units. Spend your resources. Spend your money. You're like, alright, these are very basic things. But where's it coming from? Compared to an average diamond leaguer. I... Uh, in the first four minutes, I had way more unspent minerals. That's quite significant. 
a lot of these are very, very close, so not too bad. At about four to eight minutes. Idle workers. So that's bad. That's actually... Now, you can also see the good things. It, act, it I feel like it does a little bit too much negative reinforcement. Because if you look here, I built double the average Diamond League workers between four and eight minutes. That means... You know that time when I tell you to focus on your production and your SCVs and, like, tie everything to your SCV count? That's where that comes from. Is because since you're tying everything to your SCV count, you don't miss the SCVs because you're using them as the baseline to do the rest of your build. So, obviously, when you get that many SCVs, you have more unspent minerals. I'm just saying. But you can also see the idle worker average is significantly higher. That's something you can easily work on. Eight plus minutes, uh, unspent minerals and gas. It gives you some very specific goals. Just take two replays that you thought you played pretty well. Uh, those are the best ones. The ones where you thought you played pretty well, and it'll prove you wrong. So that is um, something you can tangibly do. Something you can look at and say, that's what I need to work on. That quantitative thing. As opposed to, I need to get my third base kind of quicker. So, do I need a third-party program? You need to do exactly what I just described, which is go to SC2 Replay Stats. And uh, upload your replays or use the app to do it automatically. Uh, and you can check out the training center from there. Um, it makes it quite easy. And then you'll learn so much about the uh, replay files as well. So, there's your qualitative and your quantitative stuff to work on. I hope you enjoyed um, the low APM challenge, Terran, Terran part three. Uh, solidly gold. We'll see how long we stay there. I hope I made your day and your games a little bit better. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Stay chill.